Live from Brooklyn, New York, this is Stay Busy with Armand Sadler. Well, you know that I'm the guy. I'm out here living life. I'm busy. Stay busy. Stay busy. Stay busy. Making moves and catching flights. So please don't waste my time. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another edition of Stay Busy with Armand Sather, where we have responsible discussions on the entertainment business and the entertainment culture. I am entertained because my trio is back together. I miss them. Don't ever leave me again, please. But I, I know y'all have shit going on, but I, I don't care. Stay Busy is the number one priority. Um, <laughs> I am your host, Head Honcho, Vegan Chorizo Poppy, founder of BNB, a.k.a. The Bald Nigga Bombshell, in your headphones in your Bluetooth speaker, in your car radio, in your wired and wireless headphones, but most of all, in the podcast studio, who also goes by Chinedu and the only man to sit in front of Taylor Rooks and not tell a lie. My gang is back. What's popping, y'all? That sounded like you added to that. Yeah, he did. I was like, you can kind of razzle dazzle. It feels good to be back, though, to hear that. Yeah, yeah. 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 Go ahead. I appreciate that, brother. Hey, gang, I missed y'all. Missed y'all, too. Missed y'all, too. How? What's new? Uh, a lot, a lot. Um, last couple, uh, weeks have been eventful. Of course, I was in Texas. That was a good time. Watched the Yankees, ate some good Mexican food. Um, felt, felt attended to. Um, <laughs> this ain't Texas. <laughs> <laughs> well, she could hold me. Um, um, I was in Chicago last week, randomly. Not so random, but very short notice trip. Um, got to hang out with Chance the Rapper and Raising Cane's. Um, so yeah, a lot of traveling, more traveling is coming. Um, but I'm good. I'm in good spirits. How how about y'all? What y'all been up to? I've been adulting like a motherfucker. Mm -hmm. Just, you know, planning, uh, strategizing. I'm hosting my aunt and uncle who's visiting from Panama. And my uncle, he said he was 69 and I didn't know that. And it kind of like made me emotional. So now I'm trying to spend as much time as Mm -hmm. I can with them. Yeah. Um, I've been doing a lot of adulting, too, actually. Mm -hmm. Just, you know, trying to get my ducks in a row Mm -hmm. and then have the ducks cross the street with me. Like, like, you know what I'm saying? So Okay. Yeah, this nigga extended the metaphor. Like, I, I, I ain't that never heard that part. I said, hold on, you a rapper with? Cross the, cross the street with me. What, the ducks do that too? <laughs> hey, man. I just really just made it up in my head right hey, there. Hey, that's a bar, yeah. though. But, I fuck yeah. with that. But yeah. I understood it wholeheartedly because I'm on the same page. Yeah, yeah. 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 been good. Because it's not enough to just get them in formation. Like, yeah. well, what do you do with that formation? Mm-hmm. In football, you learn formations and you run plays out of them. You don't just say, all right, power eye right. <laughs> then you just stand there Everybody, and hike the ball. Shit, I was standing. Is, 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 is we running a halfback dive? Is we running a play action tight end corner? Like, well, what are we doing? Um, <laughs> by the way, this is Miss Two Bs and this is Will. He, oh yes, <laughs> it's okay. Like, it's okay. I got now. y'all. I got yeah, y'all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got y'all. But yeah, it's good to have y'all back. Um, and yeah, it's good to be back with you, listeners. Of course. So make sure that you subscribe to the YouTube channel and all your favorite audio streaming platforms. Like, share, comment, tell a friend to tell a friend. Do all that stuff because it means so much to us. Um, follow us at Stay Busy Pod on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. And if you want to jump on the podcast only fans, patreon.com backslash Stay Busy Pod for all raw, unfiltered, unhinged content. I want to give a big thank you to the guy Fergie Baby for coming through last week. Had a really good time with him. If you haven't heard that episode, God is from Harlem, check that out. Um, check out his new track, Trees, BBs, and Canes, and his upcoming music. But we got a lot to get into with regards to this chat. So let's jump right into it. Um, I don't know about y'all, and I kind of talk about this with Fergie lately, but the the deaths that we experience in the entertainment space hit so much harder the older I get. Mm -hmm. Like, I remember Michael Jackson died on my birthday in 2009. Oh, you're June 25th? Yeah, June 25th. So that hit really hard just because, like, I grew up on Michael. Like, I was... Like singing butterflies around the crib, mm-hmm. like you rock my all that shit. You didn't like, even like, have a birthday that year. I might as well, yeah, Mm-mm. yeah, yeah. Um, so that one hit hit me hard, but like growing up, you know, you would see certain people, even if you knew their names, like it just wouldn't, it didn't hit me that hard. I, I think the real, the first celeb death that like really fucked me up. 
I, there had to be one before Kobe, but Kobe was the one that just kind of shifted like everything. Like that Same. had me like Same. stuck. Same. And then we lost Pop Smoke a month later, mm-hmm. and just like the the pandemic deaths, whether they were COVID related or not, and just over the years, a lot of different shit. Recently, of course, Rich Homie Quan, Fat Man Scoop, um, James Earl Jones. And now we got Frankie Beverly and Tito Jackson. Two names that just go without saying. If you've been to a black cookout, you have heard Frankie Beverly's music before I let go. Thanks. Um, if you're tapped in with the Jackson Five or the Jacksons, you have heard Tito Jackson's music. Thanks. Rock and Roll Hall of Famer. They had four consecutive Billboard Hot 100 number ones, three gra- Grammy nominations for Tito. Um, so, yeah, it's just it's just tough to see these things. And. I was telling Fergie last week, like, I think about my parents and how when they were of age to really feel these deaths, like, it probably hit them hard. And now the older they get, like, they see people who they grew up on dying. It's just like, damn, bro, like, death is inevitable, but that doesn't make it any easier to to cope with for me. It just always feels like the Black music community is in a constant state of grief. Mm -hmm. Like, we don't get a break. I just remember, you know, being one years old and the community grieving uh, Biggie and Pog. And it's just always just been someone like nonstop every year. Like even before Kobe, um, Nipsey. Yes. Oh my God. Yes. XXX. And then we, those are um, deaths that we actually saw like Mm -hmm. the aftermath of online juice world. Um, PNB Rock, Mac that Miller, one oh kind of God. Mac Mill. It's so many Fuck. that you are forgetting. Yeah. Like it's it's insane. But I'm grateful that I had the chance to see um Frankie Beverly at Essence. Oh, wow. mm-hmm. That's crazy. Um, that's Mr. Essence. He's always there. Yeah. Um, and I make it my duty to see legacy acts anytime they perform, just sure. because we're in a constant state of grief. So yeah, you just you never, never know. know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Um it was tight to see people telling the story about how Tito went into the room, picked up the guitar, and if he didn't pick up the guitar, like, we would maybe never have the Jackson 5 or, like, any of that stuff. Mm-hmm. And just, like, yeah, we're in a conscious state of grief, but also, you know, it's amazing to, like, go back and, like, relive some of these classics that we grew up with, like with Tito or from even, um... Like Fat Man Scoop really messed me up, bro. Yeah, I can't oh, we saw to that too. Yeah, yeah. Fat Man Scoop really messed me up <laughs> because it was like, yeah, like just those legends, titans in the game, and like yeah. just seeing him like pass out like that was crazy and not get back up. Like he was rocking. Yeah, yeah. he was like rocking. Looked like he was having a good time and just like second went like went down. Was it a heart attack that he passed? Oh, uh, yeah, like, he collapsed on stage. I, I don't, yeah. I don't what think exactly they revealed the, yeah, the was, cause. Okay. Yeah, he just collapsed, got transported, and then he yeah. was pronounced dead. Like shortly after getting to the hospital yeah, yeah. yeah it was insane yeah. but y'all saw that tweet with the um dude who was going viral that said oh frankie beverly wasn't played in my house we played um hold on let me find it let me find it it was a spanish dude yeah. basically he was throwing Yo, shade. respectfully to the latinos the latinas because i know i love you who give a fuck right <laughs> who Relax. give a fuck was, right. like why Relax. do niggas wait till someone dies to, to say, say that, that. Hey, I, I don't care about it like, like he said frankie beverly was not played was not being played in my household when I was growing up. More like Celia Cruz, Tito Rojas, Gilberto Santa Rosa. And don't get me wrong. <laughs> those are all the people that were played in my home as well. Mm-hmm. And like Frankie Beverly was not played in my home either. Um, Aretha wasn't like all the black legends were not played in my home mm-hmm. because my mom doesn't listen to it. Right. But I watched a lot of television and film and the sync placements went crazy. Yeah, you, you was tapped in. Like, like, you definitely heard that yeah, shit at yeah. some point in your life. So that was... And then I click on his page and I see a Panamanian flag and I was just like... Aw, oh, damn. Uh, Making you and people look bad. <laughs> I it, it's, so, I, it, it's so funny to me when people be like, yeah, I've never heard this. And like how you just said, you heard it before. Yeah. You like, heard it. You heard it. You act like you, you can act like you didn't hear it, but like, like you just said, like the sinks... All types of stuff, like in passing, maybe a yeah. car. Like, yes. you know what I'm saying? Like, but you the hear movies the for sure. Yeah, like, yeah. you're not shit, telling bro. me you haven't, you didn't watch Johnson Family Vacation or something. Like, shit. you hear like, this shit, yeah, bro. That's a great yeah. movie, by the way. I love I, it. I, I always put that on. That's I, a comfort film. That's for a sure, that's a great one. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it's just um, you know, I think the fact that these deaths are announced like means something. Like, even if you weren't tapped in, it means something to someone. So I just don't get right. why people have to make the most stupid or insensitive comment in that moment. Like. Shut up. Just, like, it's good okay for you. Shut up sometimes. It's, <laughs> it's completely okay to shut up. It's, it's suggested. It is preferred. Shut the fuck up sometimes. <laughs> um, but, yeah. Yeah, so that's that's tough. And like you said, it's just been 
very sequential in a very short period of time. Um, so it's just, it makes you numb and yes. it's like, you don't want to be desensitized or numb to this stuff, but you don't really have a choice when you're getting over one and then another one happens and then you're getting over that one and then another one happens and you can't even get over the first one. And yeah, it's, uh, it's on and on and on, but rest in peace to Frankie Beverly, Tito Jackson, of course, sending love to all their loved ones, fans, friends, family. Um, and yeah, let's, uh, let's move on to what's been an interesting last couple of weeks in the music and entertainment space. Um, isn't what? it always? <laughs> quite, quite literally. Isn't it always? It, it is. And the interesting it is, it's, it's sometimes weird interesting. Sometimes it's good interesting. Usually it's just weird interesting. Like this Tyla stuff, for example. I feel like the last few months there has been this odd hate train toward her. Certain comments that she's made in interviews, things that she did has done at the VMAs. Um, the industry plant conversation. So the most recent controversy, and I, I didn't watch the full VMAs. I was at, I was at the hotel in Chicago eating and they had it on the TV on mute, but I didn't see the Tyler thing like live. I saw a video of it later. And so she's holding her award. She's giving a speech. And then she like motions to Lil Nas X to like hold the award for her because it's heavy. She's a very skinny girl. She probably like, she ain't got no biceps. She, she can't hold that shit for long. It's all right. Like a nigga like me would have sprinted and grabbed that award for her. Here, here I, I got you, my queen. Like, <laughs> you ain't no problem. <laughs> I got you. <laughs> but people thought she was motioning to um, Halle Bailey to hold the award. And they made like a whole controversy out of that. And then she had to go on Twitter and address it. She was like, no, I wasn't doing nothing to my girl. Let's celebrate my award, blah, blah, blah. Um, and then Joe Budden's comments about her at the Usher concert. Just really weird hate towards Tyler. What, what, like, what do y'all think about these things and, and these small things that people make big things with regards to her? And why do y'all think she's getting so much hate recently? I mean, I do know that there was a shift around the time she made the comments about her being colored. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, that threw people off. That threw people off. And as, yeah. <laughs> and <laughs> as someone who like listens to Dan Tall and Soka and I see the way um, African Americans engage with the genre and just genres that are not based in the states, but the people who are performing it are black. It is a weird uh, relationship dynamic that I haven't quite figured out myself. Mm -hmm. But like you know, where she's from, that is the correct term. You right. know, colored. So like, it's just too much. Like people want their faves to be politically correct and. Yeah. I don't care about them being politically correct. I think Tyler makes great music. Mm -hmm. um, she looked so cute that night mm -hmm. in that dress. Time. Shout out to Aria. That's one of my favorite designers. And the little neon panty under was so tea. Mm -hmm. People was hating on it. But um, yeah, I think it's just cool to dog pile on her now. So a lot of people are just doing it because it's the cool thing to do. And it took away from her speech where she made like that very important distinction between Afrobeats and Amapiano music, mm -hmm. which is what she makes. And she doesn't make Afrobeat music. So I do think that that was the most important message out of that moment that was lost in the drama. That's just always so stupid. People complain because they have Wi-Fi. <laughs> yeah. Wi-Fi they don't even pay for. Yeah. <laughs> Type shit. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think I think people are really just hating on her because one, she's a new kid on the block, mm -hmm. and she's good and yeah. like actually like a, a a threat, I guess you would say. If you know, music is like competition sometimes for some of these people. But I think yeah. you know, I think yeah, I think she's just a new kid on the block, and she's good, and she like you know she has like water is a hit, mm -hmm. like you know she has some hits. She had a couple of hits. She's, yeah, like Jump you know, going crazy. But she didn't shut down well. the Met Gala when she went to the Met Gala. Her dress and everything and was that a, dress was what? one of one. You know, and then yeah, I think yeah, I think it's just that, bro. And I've seen a lot of people compare her to early Rihanna, and like uh, I've seen that. Too. You that know too. what I'm saying? Yeah. Like from the like, I don't think. I, one, I don't think industry plant is a bad term. I think it's like a, I think it's an okay term. Like, yes, this artist is that good that yeah. she's getting that much invested into her. That's why it kind of reminds me of a Rihanna. But other than that, bro, I, she's she's she, she's also doing a good job. I feel like responding to it too, like yeah. and like kind of like being funny, like poking jokes at it because like yeah. she knows people like these people are ridiculous. Mm -hmm. 
And then, yeah, you know. <clears throat> I wish she kept the bio. Yeah, yeah, facts. Like, like oh, what bio? She, like, changed her bio. She put it to uppity African. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, that's right, girl. I was like, okay. I was like, yeah. I was like all right. Yeah. I was like, all right, yeah. Speaking as the resident sassy podcaster, Sasty's niggas, Tyler. <laughs> I was like, oh, yeah, she's locked in now. Yeah. Like, facts. Like, she's into it. Like, she's so. having an incredible run. She's won, like, every award that a new artist would want. VMA, mm-hmm. Grammy, um, BT Award. Something else I'm missing. But she's won, like, everything that a new act would want. And it's just like, when we get a new star like this, as much as we have talked about the state of music and how we're kind of down on it, for me, it's exciting to see a new star who I think can actually really be something, like, have staying power. And so when people are immediately trying to tear them down or talking about the industry plant shit, like, that's the dumbest. And I, I know we've talked about it before, mm-hmm. but, like, it's just so, why, why, why do we care? Is the music good or not? Is, is like what? Why is how someone is pushed, marketed, backed matter? Like, do you like the? If, if you don't like the music, okay, just don't listen to the music. But the 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 deep analysis and hyper focus people do on these industry on these alleged industry plants is super weird. I I, I got to call out our boy Kojo. What's up, Kojo? My guy, I love you. But um, you remember the uh, the uh, four bats tweet he made, and then I was like, oh yeah. So there's been this. <laughs> Odd narrative about four bats. I like, oh yeah, y'all was hyping him up, and now he's nowhere to be found. He has and nowhere to be found. He's touring, but you don't see not no footage from the tour. I've seen, I've, I've seen footage. You got a song coming I've out with Little Baby on Friday too. I've I've seen footage. Little Baby. Like, wow. He 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 he's not the hot conversation now <laughs> that he shit. was when he first popped up on the scene, and but that was like, Kojo's point. But that's, but like, so what? Like, but that's the whole point. Like, how can do, you? Do we have to talk about something all the time for it to be important? We like, still talk about Kendrick and Drake. Well, Kendrick is different. Kendrick's been in the game for like 15 years. But that's the point. He's, these are these new artists top. can't do it at all at any point. Like, their, their drama is what's holding, like, keeping them visible and relevant. Well, I, I don't think Forbes has had any drama. I just think it was. And that's like, why he's not in, that's why no one's talking about him. Well, I, for me, it's a situation of he he just has to show and prove, like with the next project. I like the first project. I like the Usher remix he did. I liked his feature on uh, Cash Cobain's album. I've seen footage of the tour. I've heard the tour. Like people fuck with it. Like he's actually up there singing. Those people, I need to see these. People. It's people like people within the music industry, like and and fans. People in the industry and fans don't count. too, and fans too. Like I've I've seen actual people say that they like the show. Like I I, I don't know for me. The him not being talked about as much as he was initially, it doesn't really mean anything to me. It's just like because we've also had new things to talk about, like with the with the beef with Super Bowl with so much shit has happened in the last few months. Four bats is just it's like number fifteen on the priority list of all the things we've had to talk about in the last. Because he's not months. that hot. You see, Tyler. Well, yeah, but, but, but yeah, he's, he's, he's one project in. Her. Like I'm not expecting him to to be the type of artist that I would like. All right, if it's if it's a choice between talking about. Kendrick, like you said, are talking about him. We gonna talk about Kendrick first because he's. Oh, what about Tyler or him? I just feel like I feel like I feel like Tyler's one project in. I feel, exactly. But she she's also been making music for a while and too. I feel like you can't compare those two. What yeah. Tyler and Four Bats? Yeah, it's just it's t- Four Bats is just totally, not hot because he's not hot. I I usually totally don't agree with Kojo a lot, <laughs> but that one. You I I, that. I I I don't know. I I just think it like. And this is general. It's not just towards you, Kojo. It's like, for, for me, it's, it's annoying when people do like, oh, y'all not talking about that thing y'all was talking about as much as when y'all was talking about it. It's like, yeah, when we were talking about it, it was a hotter topic of conversation. When when Forbats comes with a new single and a new project, he's going to get talked about again because people are probably going to put the sophomore slump album, uh, allegations on him or be like, yo, he, he probably, probably going to flop. Like, I don't know. Conversations just come in and out. Like, it, it doesn't really mean anything to me. And I don't, like... Again, Twitter is a bubble too. Like the things that people talk about on Twitter, sometimes they don't actually matter in real life, and vice versa. So people yeah. not talking about four bats doesn't really mean anything um, to me. But yeah, the the industry plant shit, just in general, it's like that's another buzzword people people learned, and they just they throw it on everything. Oh shit, this artist that I wasn't aware of out of nowhere is getting all these numbers. Industry plant. It's the new oh. Illuminati. Like it's so fucking annoying. It's so like <laughs> shit. If 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 I'm in that position where I'm getting pushed, marketing dollars behind me, stylist, billboards, make me an industry plan too. Sign me up. <laughs> Sign me the fuck up. That's what I'm saying. If that means I'm gonna be successful, Billboard Hot 100s, Billboard 200 Top 10s, award nominations. Sign me the fuck up. Make me an industry plan. Like 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 <laughs> like. Well, what are we really doing? Because y- y'all got friends who making music that got no motion. Oh, I- I'm sure they would Clock love it. to be an industry plan. And I. Oops. <laughs> 
shit. So like, all this know. industry plan shit y'all throwing around, your friends are striving <laughs> to be in that position. So learn a new word. Enjoy the music. Do you like the music or not? Stop stop talk, caring about the rollouts and, and the and the and, and the narrative and all this other. Shut up. Shut up. Do you like the music or not? That's it. That's it. <laughs> Be a fan and not the acronym. An actual fan. <sighs> okay. Uh, moving on to fans and fans of things. Um, our our trap king, our um, our, our legend, our toxic king, as some people refer to him. Uh, Future has announced mixtape Pluto will be coming on September twentieth. Now. Are y'all excited about New Future in a year where we've already gotten 40 plus songs from him? And those projects were the catalyst for a very mm -hmm. <laughs> exhausting next few months. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I am not. Mm -hmm. And I know he said if we just like the music or not, but even the rollout is just underwhelming. It's just him tweeting. And then I saw him perform at Barclays mm -hmm. and the performance wasn't really that good. Um, it was just a familiarity of his catalog that yeah. made it an enjoyable experience. Yeah. But I'm not. And um, it just seems like there's just some like music business behind it. Like his last solo project um, came out in 2022. Yeah, I, I, I never liked you. I never liked you. That one. He also sold like his catalog that same year. Mm -hmm. And now um, the joint project with Metro was released under a different company. I think it's like Wilburn Productions yeah, or yeah. something like that. So I'm just like, we know Future's a businessman from that time. He had to get out that last contract and he released Hendrix and um, those albums a week apart. But I just feel like he's just trying to maximize the profit mm -hmm. and just, you know, get his money for from streaming under this new deal, he mm -hmm. probably gets, he probably has like a bigger percentage or a bigger cut. And he know he has a core fan base that's going to stream his shit anyway. Yeah. So I think that's just all it's about, but I'm not excited or not. <laughs> My expectations are low. How about you, Will? Yeah. Um, I don't know. I feel like I'm like low-key like sacrilegious if I say that. <laughs> or like sacrilegious <laughs> to like like the toxic tribe I say I'm not excited because I'm low-key not excited like I just yeah. I don't know like it's I don't know bro it's 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 weird it's like a weird time for future and it's like a like what's, what's it called mixtape mixtape Mix -tape Pluto mixtape Pluto yeah but even the title's lazy yeah, like that's... The, yeah so I'm saying like even like that doesn't Everything he's doing is lazy. Like, and that's what I was going to talk about. I'm, I'm going to completely contradict the points I was making earlier, but the branding of it is weird. <laughs> like, when we used to, when we got a future mixtape in his prime, they were titled other things. Monster, Beast Mode, 56 Nights. Yes. Branding it as mixtape Pluto is weird. It's almost like, it's like when an artist, like, when Big Sean does Detroit 2 like eight years after the first Detroit and it's like you're trying to recapture That's what something. it feels like. It feels like, like he's trying to recapture Calling something. it mixtape Pluto. That's weird. Like just make a mixtape mm -hmm. and come up with something else. Like, yeah. I, like, like if he's trying to condition fans to be prepared for something and I mean I, I think it's going to be good. I thought his products earlier this year were good. They didn't have much staying power with me. But it's just like, do I need 20 more good songs when you already gave me 40 good songs? Like, I, I, it's, it's just, it's a little overwhelming for me. So I'm not excited for it. I'm going to listen. Future's my guy. I love Future. Yeah. But, and it's also like a big budget mixtape too. Like, I, I got invited to playbacks for it. Like, this isn't just some like mixtape for the love, for the culture, mm -hmm. where he's just putting it out. Like, right. he's, they're hosting listening sessions. <laughs> they're doing all this other stuff for it. So it's just a really interesting decision after what was a pretty, I wouldn't say it was a huge year for them, but like, we, we, we don't trust you. We still don't trust you. Mm -hmm. Two albums that people loved this year, both did pretty good numbers compared to what everyone else is doing, but it's just a lot. It's a lot. So it's yeah. hard to be excited. I, I like whatever he gives us. I'd probably like it a lot more if we got it next year. Right. I, I like, Put something else out, like a memoir or something. We don't even know him for real. Like, well, I don't think we'll ever get to know Future. Nah, <laughs> it's, it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's well beyond that point. We didn't know him when he was new, so <laughs> yeah, it's over now. Yeah, I think, bro, and like the mixtape Pluto thing, I feel like it's going to be like a lot of just like hard ass trap shit and maybe not that much 
yeah. melody and like him like doing the singing stuff or stuff like that because I feel like and then like just looking at the cover of the house on fire with the blue flames and yeah. stuff I feel like he he's trying to like like you say he's trying to recapture that that run he had with the mixtapes of like yeah monster and then the I can't think of all Beast of them but, like, yeah, Beast nights, Man, yeah all, all of them nice. he's trying to like so it's like yeah mixtape Pluto and people mm-hmm. are probably thinking or he wants people to think they're about to get some of that yeah so I mean shit bro if there's a 56 nights on there or something like that that's, mm-hmm. that's hot like hey he'll, he'll, he'll probably catch one Future I know that's what I'm saying like, it's gonna be, it's gonna be something yeah. on there but at the least. other thing is some of the the features which I, I won't be able to confirm until I hear the actual project Travis Scott Playboy Cardi it's like yeah, we got them on we don't trust you like we got a big song from you Travis and Playboy Cardi already I think Lil Baby's featured on it too Whatever, like I'm just I think like he he teased T Grizzly was on it too. I don't need to hear T Grizzly. Like, all yeah. due respect, N- yeah. nice guy, but I'm nah. <laughs> I, don't, I don't need it. Like I I don't know. It's I it it just feels like you're gonna give us this the same type of stuff just packaged differently. Yep. And Future doesn't make bad music to me, but again, it's just like there's a level of exhaustion that I have with him. Mm-hmm. Like I I got everything I would want from Future this year. I got rap stuff. I got R and B stuff. I even got pop dance future which i never fucking expected like i don't really i don't need anything else so that's coming um (laughs) (laughs) we will i'll be waiting how old is future uh or i want to say like 41 okay 41 let's confirm that we're a responsible podcast right uh 40 okay oh he's 40 he turns 41 november 20th okay um yeah so that's happening mixtape pluto will be happening we will have a full review for you all when that is out um another project that is coming though we don't have a date for this one yet uh miss onika tanya mirage right mirage right yeah aka <laughs> Nicki minaj <laughs> she instead of um doing a deluxe album for pink friday 2 she's going to give pink friday 3 now she didn't give a date for that yet she did say she wanted to give something leading up to it um but she said these songs were too good for a deluxe too iconic for a deluxe so she wants to give a whole new album. Now, if we look at Nikki's release history, we got Pink Friday 2 last December. I think her last album before that was Queen. So that was a five-year break. Yeah. Like, that's crazy. And then it was Pink. It was the original Pink Friday, which was like 2014. That's why I don't believe her. Yeah. <laughs> like, I, I'm like, all right. So I don't believe her. This will probably take a while to come out. She's touring right now. I- like... So to She's put everything into a rollout that she would normally put into it, I don't think this will come anytime soon. Um, so, yeah. The documentary <laughs> never even came that she I was teasing. I didn't even know she was doing a documentary. She was teasing it for years, dropped a trailer, a six-part documentary and all of that, mm. and it has yet to see the light of day. Mm. I think that should be prioritized over a third installment of the Pink Friday series. Um, that, I don't know. I just... I enjoyed Pink Friday too. It has some really good tracks on that. Yeah, I enjoyed it a lot. And um, she teased the visuals for everybody, which I would have loved to see. She never dropped a video for it? No wow. one. Videos aren't priority anymore. There's no platform but for I feel like videos. she's one of the artists that would put the effort into it, though. She would, but like she's also fake doing whatever Beyonce do. So if she ain't dropped the Renaissance visuals and still performing and then she broke record sales what's the point mm. of spending the money on the video you know Good point. but if there's no platform for it it doesn't make sense and we shouldn't even have the bmas anymore low-key but that's a different I, topic I, I think i did see you tweet that yeah um, yeah it's it's an interesting time for that because like videos are not like they're Shout out to the artists who do put effort into their right. music videos. Cardi, she's one of them. Very few and far between, but the ones that do, it's appreciated, and the fans appreciate appreciate it. But the VMAs are almost like just MTV's version of the Grammys. Like, like who cares about video of the year anymore? We care about who's the best R and B artist, who's the best rap artist. Like that's, th- that's what I was looking at. I was looking at the song of the summer bracket. I was looking at like best this, best that. I wasn't video shit didn't move me because who's really making videos these days? Right, but um, I don't believe Nikki. I gotta see the album to believe it. <laughs> yeah, I, I think it'll be some time. A, a doc would be cool. Like if she, if she actually put a doc together, I, I think that would be cool because she said it was together. Mm-hmm. She just needs to drop it. Mm-hmm. So, because I think while and while I make no 
excuses for Nikki's wild behavior. Like she's <laughs> like, I, I remember when I went to the, the show, I, I was like in, in, in my group chat, my boys talking about it. They were like, yo, so you're going to be a barb for the night. I was like, nah. And then I sat there and she went hit for hit for hit. I was like, yo, I'm well, I'm kind of becoming a barb me. for the night. <laughs> I'm a bar. She's a terrible person still. But I was a barb for the night. And it just made me like, you know, you just, you appreciate like, God damn, she's been around for a minute. She gave us a lot. And I think she's shown us herself, but it's been, we haven't, we haven't seen maybe the best sides of her. It's been, yeah, since like streaming, like, you know, during her MySpace era, her come up, she was Mm -hmm. real, like, you know, she documented everything, but we haven't gotten update on that and yeah. a lot has happened since yeah. then i think that a documentary would humanize her yeah. and just give like a different perspective because yeah. i am also a woman with a strong personality <laughs> i'm an acquired taste and yeah. i'm often misunderstood so when it's it's not until someone takes the time to get to know me they be like you know what Ab? Mm-hmm. you ain't that bad then when y'all see me wilding out it be like <laughs> But that's just Eb. Yeah. <laughs> to know Eb is to love yeah. her. <laughs> you know, a doc would be amazing if Nick, if like a doc on Nikki would be amazing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, let, let, like, let's let's see you hanging out with uh, what she call her kid, Poppy. Papa Bear. Yeah, Papa Bear. Let's mm-hmm. see you hanging out with Papa Bear. We don't need to see she know, shop it the, around the husband, Mister Petty, and his 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 she gonna show his him. crimes. We can, we can stay away from him. She's gonna show but, him. But I, I think just you know, see if we were able to see a side of Nikki that isn't her responding to beef on Twitter. <laughs> you know, going crazy on whatever her radio app is now, like all that stuff. Like if we just got to see her, see her process, like yeah. kind of like the hundred gigs shit, shit. Let's see you in the just studio. Like that. Let's see you, you know, like kind of being the, the brains behind your music. Like let's like, let, let us into that process. I think that would be cool. So yeah, I don't need a, a new album, Me um, either. but she announced it. Uh, artists be announcing a lot of shit that don't happen so <laughs> we'll see okay. we'll see if this actually comes <laughs> to fruition but yeah that was um that was what Nikki had for us uh some new music from the weekend there weren't too many um tracks that really like moved me um to speak okay. about but uh we did get uh finally an official single from Playboy Cardi not a YouTube release not an Instagram song this song is on YouTube and streaming platforms to play all red playboy cardi what were our thoughts on the track i thought it was future <laughs> mm. yeah yeah i mean um i liked it better when he pre do it at mm-hmm. summer uh not summer jam summer stage mm-hmm. uh lyric eliminates thing yeah. uh festival um but yeah it kind of kind of underwhelmed me but Bro, this numbers on it and like how much he like did you like it was number one on Spotify and like the the numbers he's kind of like putting up right now is kind of like what the fuck is going on? The incels yeah. love him, bro. I, the stimulus is nuts. I think it's beyond the incels. Like he, yeah, bro. He he's, he's got the kids. He's He's got old bro. niggas who fuck with him. Like he's got he's his his holds on his fan base, which I can't even call it a cult anymore. Like it's it is. Like yeah. the, the the bubble is bursting. Like he's 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 big. Like he's yeah, bro. He's, I saw he's a bunch a of people act. dressed like him. Bro, yeah. I was like, wait, fuck, that bro. he's the male Jada Waiter. Yeah, and like, it it took me a while to really understand his his influence. But like, as I talked to younger music fans, and they like, yo, this artist, this artist, and like the Destroy Lonelys, the Ken Carsons, and all the influence they take from him, and just like even other artists who were, were around before him, making records like him. I'm like, yo, this nigga Cardi is he's uh like. He's, he's an enigma. <laughs> I was surprised he beat out the weekend single like that. Like, oh, I was like, um, mm, that wasn't surprising. On um the uh the the projections for the upcoming Billboard chart. Oh uh, no, just like the streams, like um. Oh yes, like, yes, like, yes, you yes, know yes, what I'm yes. saying like just just like the the day one streaming, how they always yeah. be like doing that type of I don't know what they would call it, but like it was. I think he had like 17 million streams, like mm-hmm. 12 million streams, and he was number one. And then the weekend was like number eleven. I was like, bro, what the hell? He's he's done a really good job at building up the anticipation. I know a lot of like diehard Cardi fans were getting angry with him for not officially releasing anything. And so I think just him finally dropping something was like a sigh of relief for them. Like, yeah, we don't gotta scour YouTube and download mm-hmm. the MP3. We don't gotta rip the video from IG. Like we have something we can actually listen to. And he he's also part of he's like probably one of the best at snippet culture pr- promotion like dropping snippets 
performing shit at shows that isn't officially out. So mm-hmm. fans have these songs in their mind, like, yo, All Red, yo, uh, Hood by Air, yo, like this, right. like, I need that. I need that. Once he dropping that. So I think that really worked to his advantage. Um, I'm interested in the album. You know, I, I, I don't, I don't believe that he's going to be one of the guys to step up when the big three is gone. I know a lot of people are putting that on him. And I think that's crazy for someone at the end of the day, the, the biggest artist in music was always a rapper, like in hip hop, the biggest artist in hip hop was always a rapper, rapper. Right. And Cardi raps in a way, but like <laughs> he, he's, he's not the, he's not the traditional type. And I mean, you know, time is passing. So tradition is, you know, maybe archaic but at the end of the day this is that the hip-hop i grew up on the, the biggest guys were always rapper rappers but i do think cardi can be in that like Lil uzi vert ilk where Lil uzi was selling crazy and was you know had transcended the the just the black hip-hop audience and is doing house and pop records and all this type shit like i, I do think and he's there already he's working with C- camila cabello that. like he's mm-hmm. he's done he's done big stuff and so i think this next album is really gonna put him um, it's it's going to decide, you know, whether he stays at the level he is or he hits that trajectory that a lot of people yeah. um, predict for him. But I thought I thought the record was cool, too. I definitely thought it was future. You could hear the future influence. Um, I didn't like it as much as like 2024 or some of the other songs he's released several months ago. But I thought it was cool. I was happy for Cardi fans that they could finally stop whining on the Internet. <laughs> <laughs> um, I know he did drop like pre-orders and bundles for his album but he didn't give them a date yet so that's the new thing that they're going to complain about um but yeah i think it's interesting as fuck too that how much kanye like like he's like him and kanye are like locked in for yeah real. and it's like huh kanye always picks a new music yeah. yeah yeah like like it's it, yeah it's just it went like, from cuddy to travis <laughs> to to six nine briefly to Slap. now yeah. it's playboy cardi and, <laughs> yeah like that, that's, that's Kanye's thing. Kanye loves a good symbiotic relationship where mm-hmm. you just start working with this new thing. You take all their juju. You try yeah. to do it yourself. They're definitely the, the rollout's definitely starting though, because that mm-hmm. billboard, um, like that oh, billboard the cover, cover story, and yeah, like, yeah, yeah, like the little video and stuff, or yeah. like which is like the same thing he was talking about, with Nikki. Like it's cool to see, it's cool to see artists in their element mm-hmm. that's not just always like manufactured element, yeah. like. We want to see some real shit. Like, mm-hmm. we want to see, like, you, I don't know, just do normal stuff for a mm-hmm. little bit. So, right. <clears throat> but yeah, cool record. We'll see when that album comes. I mean, I know a lot of people are hoping for him to save 2024. Time is ticking. It is the middle of September. It ain't happening. I don't know yeah. if he'll do another holiday album. Um, I know a lot of people did like when he dropped Whole Lot of Red on Christmas 2020. Um, but we'll see. We'll see. I've, I've definitely been waiting for it. I'm interested in hearing what he got for us next. Uh, but you brought up Weekend earlier. Perfect transition. New week, Weekend single, Dancing in the Flames. Uh, this came maybe like a week or so after he announced his next album title, Hurry Up Tomorrow. We don't have a date for that yet. Um, Dancing in the Flames, I heard it for the first time. I think it was Monday Night Football when it was uh, Jets Niners. It played in a commercial for some brand i forget the brand but i was like oh that shit that should sound good mm-hmm. what the fuck that should sound good and i played it i've been playing the shit all weekend like i I really love it i know a lot of people are over poppy dance weekend i, I love this shit like i i this is my favorite music of his i'll always love the trilogy you know bag i'll always love the my dear melancholy bag but him doing his own version of of this michael jackson type stuff but making it like woozy and all that like it's it's great. So I, I really love Dance in the Flame. Like, I thought he sounded great vocally. Loved the bop to it. He released, like, the acapella. And you, you know those, like, EPs where it slowed up, sped up, all that shit. Like, he yeah. did one of those. Mm. The acapella version sounds good. So I'm like, hey, man, he he's kind of cold right now as an artist. Like, Weekend will always be one of the biggest names in music, but he hasn't really done anything of note right. within the last year, year and a other half. Other than this Drake. Other than this Drake and he did it on a fucking bedroom anthem <laughs> like <laughs> like right. whatever but um yeah he's he's like not too hot right now so this to me this was a good way to get me intrigued in hearing um new music from him the concert in brazil was crazy though oh Gosh. the the uh the yeah. uh i think yeah. it was in yeah, yeah. 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 He, it just, it just... he performed in like sao paulo yeah. or whatever and, and he brought out playboy cardi to do the their song also sounded good that song sounds crazy yes. yeah oh that's good. my jam what uh popular right 
No, 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 oh, no. Uh, he has a new one coming with Playboy Cardi. Oh, yeah. I, 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 I don't remember the name. Yeah, he's outside. He's outside. Nah, um, the the video was good too. I might definitely I get the video, iPhone yeah. 16 Plus. That's what it was. It was the iPhone collection. Yeah. It's like uh-huh. you can tell there's a big machine behind this mm-hmm. release too like yeah, when uh-huh. I played it on YouTube the uh-huh. YouTube ad was like a preview of the video saying <laughs> that it was shot on the iPhone mm-hmm. and then the video played and then you said that you heard it during the game yeah. so yeah. you can tell that the forces that be are like pushing this record mm-hmm. but um, I love Pop Weekend too yeah. and um, like you said we haven't heard anything from him in a, in a minute and mm-hmm. like this song is it's like, it's cool. It's not bad. I'm not mad at it. Yeah. And I'm just like, all right, what else you got? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, yeah, because he did, last last year he had all those, uh, for the Idol, the show he was like on, he did a yes. bunch of songs for the soundtrack. That's the song that I said Popular is my jam. Yeah, Popular that's my with, shit. Uh, Playboy and Madonna, that shit's yeah, hard. Yeah, that's, that's my shit. Hard. Um, interestingly, good. Oh, was ta- wait. What's up? We said he ain't have nothing going on the show. Yeah, but did it, didn't it get canceled after season It did one? get canceled after one season because yeah. people were hating, though. I loved it. I actually wanted to keep I, going. I saw very Me mixed. too. I, I, just, wanted, I just wanted to it. see it play out. Like, you yes. know what I'm saying? Like, I was just... Yeah, I'm I, saw I miss Tedros. I very mixed I reviews with you, of that bro. show. I, 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 I didn't watch it. As y'all know, I'm not a big TV show guy, but I, I the reviews I saw had me like, I almost want to see this just to see exactly. why niggas hate it so much, but then I also want to see why niggas love it so much. And, and that's what made me start watching it. Mm-hmm. I saw, like, the hate comments, and I was just like... I started seeing me. who the hate comments were coming from. I'm like, child, you don't even like Nikki. Bye. <laughs> that's, my, that's my favorite thing is tuning out certain people's opinions. Because like, I'm like, oh, oh it's you. If, you. if you hate that, I probably am going to like it. <laughs> <laughs> for but, real though. Yeah, no, he did have that going on, but more so like musically. Like he was dropping records from the from the show. From but the like, show. None of but the records stick. went crazy. Like popular. Except for popular. It should have. Yeah. It, like that was one of my favorite songs last Same. year. That's, I, I played that like. Same. A lot. It was a great record. Um, early projections for this song have it debuting at number 15 on the Billboard Hot 100, which is a pretty low yeah. debut for the weekend. His last lead single, Take My Breath from Dawn FM, debuted at number six. And he's mm-hmm. typically a top 10, top five, number one type guy. And so this just goes back to what we've been talking about, these ongoing lower numbers for certain acts who would be performing at a certain level. Um, and on top of the fact that, like, musically, like we said, he's cold. His last hit, we were talking about it in my group chat the other day. His last hit was, like, Creepin' with uh, Metro and 21. And I didn't really like I didn't that like song. like that one. Yeah, because it, it, like, That's all right. That's a sample. Yeah, it's a very obvious, the Mario, Mario like, very, it, it, nah. it, it didn't really do it for me. Um, but the, the, the shit caught on crazy to the point where they had a remix from Diddy. You know, at the time when, when it's that was, it's because Mario Winans is on the sample. Mm-hmm. That shit don't count. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was just a clear nostalgia bait, but it, it caught on, but. If you try to look before that, like Dawn FM, as much as I love that album, it didn't really have a hit on it. Like it didn't, it didn't really have anything. And it had a couple of songs that I thought would be hits and they just didn't catch on like that. After Hours was loaded with hits. You had Blinding Lights, <laughs> Heartless, like um, Save Your Tears. You can go on and on for that yeah. one. But it's been, it's been, so this album will be an interesting uh, thing for Weekend. And I remember when he dropped Dawn FM, gonna beat him for the number one spot on the Billboard uh, 200. Oh, yeah. And weekend was kind of fake crashing out. He's like, "Yo, but in fucking in uh in, in Kazakhstan, I'm I'm number one. Like you talking about countries we don't even care about. Like, bro, like you know. So it's it, it's it was it's just interesting. So I'm interested in seeing how this performs. I haven't seen too many people talk about the record. And Me either. Usually, weekend drops like he's one of the few event artists that we have left. To where when he does something, it's a big deal. The album announcement, I really see people going crazy about him announcing the single. Like, I thought people would see the commercial that I saw and be like, yo, that's the new song. That shit sound. No one was really talking about it. Like, I, I had to tell my group chat, like, yo, I think that song in the commercial is his upcoming record. And niggas was like, oh, cool. I was like, oh, wow. Like, yeah, very interesting. But the pre-pro doc reminded me. I was like, oh, yeah, he did post mm-hmm. that picture just staring in the camera looking <laughs> crazy. <laughs> did, you guys see, did you guys see the very nasty uh, Photoshop people did of that that photo? Yeah. We're not going to repeat it, but if you guys have seen it on, on Twitter, you, you know what we talk about. <laughs> you internet niggas are sick. Yo. Y'all are sick. Um, that shit was funny as fuck, though. But, yeah, so um, I'm also wondering, will he drop this year? Will he wait? Um, I, well, I'm trying to think of the trends. It was, uh, Dawn FM was January 2022. After Hours was March 2020. 
probably quarter one. Yeah, I, I could see him doing a Q1 drop because people usually get out the way in Q1. Mm-hmm. So I could see him doing that too. So we'll see. But I really like Dancing in, in the Flames. That's a great record. That's a really great record. So that is that. Um, let's jump into this lunch break real quick. Um, Mr. Bees, you been watching the, the NFL? <laughs> No, not at all. <laughs> but if you got a bet for me, okay, send that. Okay, I've I've been doing okay. I've I've been doing all right on fan right because that last matter of fact, don't send that. What? Will. Yo, what? That, that was one parlay. <laughs> That's all it takes. It was one parlay. That's all it takes. Like, you act like I was on the court. <laughs> <laughs> oh Jesus Christ! <laughs> I don't bet, so you can't ask me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I'm not but a it was a very weird week too that we saw. Uh, the Ravens lost. Forty Nine ers lost. Cowboys, they got whooped by the Saints. I love to watch that. Um, Will, you your Bears? How 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 you feeling two weeks in, man? Uh, I woke up this morning a little less on my bed, a little less pissed because last night was last night was rough. Uh, yeah, I mean, if people follow my Twitter, you probably see me crashing out. I definitely saw the tweets, and then yeah, I yeah. deleted them this morning. But um, <laughs> that's usually every sports game that I watch. You can see me crashing out on Twitter. Yeah. So. If you guys want to come see, just follow me. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I, I I feel all right, bro. Um, except you know they have like my grandmother as the office of office of line. Yeah. So uh, Caleb Williams might die this year, and if he does, it will be unfortunate. Yeah, he, I'm he, figure he, speech. He's not because I'm just like <laughs> yo, grandmother. <laughs> Football is dangerous. No, so. no, no, no. It's just our, our office of line is so bad. It's like yeah. it's like it could be my grandmother out there blocking. So that's what yeah. I'm saying. Um. But not, I'm, I'm all right, bro. I'm mm-hmm. all right. And also, you know, I got Sunday Ticket this year on oh, wow. YouTube. You, 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 you spent locked bread in. for that. <laughs> yes, locked in, locked in. So, you know, I'll be watching the Red Zone, doing all that stuff. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Did yeah. the Jets win yesterday? We did. We did. Not we. We did. <laughs> I, was, I was on the field. Um, yeah, beat the Titans by a touchdown. Uh, things looked a lot better. Our offensive line looked a lot better this week. Our defense looked better. So, that was, um, it was good to see because they had me. And granted, it was, it was the 49ers, but losing to a backup running back had me, especially because I was in here talking shit, like, yo, we about to beat them. C- CMC's out. We were not lit. But this week, much better. Rodgers and Brees Hall have great chemistry. Mm-hmm. Our backup running back, Braylon Allen, is fantastic. Yeah, he's, he's, he's nasty. Um, so, yeah, I, it, 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 was def- it was a weird, weird week. A, a couple parlays hit, so that, the, that's all that matters to me. I, I felt good about okay, that. Okay, you could, you could give me one. Okay, I got you. I got you. You know, you, you know what's really crazy? Not really crazy, but one, like, that people, I just, I feel like they don't understand, like, NFL's long as fuck. Like, yes. the season is long as fuck. It's like, mm-hmm. they play eight, it's 18 weeks now? They play, yes, yeah, 18 weeks. Every team plays 17. Yeah, weeks. and it's just like, yeah, bro, like, we're just getting started. And, yep. like, <laughs> I can see, I can tell this is about to be a, a bumpy road. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. <laughs> but, it's gonna be fun, bro. Sports. It's gonna be very interesting. Did you have some early Super Bowl predictions? I can't lie to you, bro. Until somebody, until somebody knocks off fifteen, mm-hmm. I, 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 I expect them to be back in it. Um, but from the NFC, I don't know. The bad. NFC, like, it feels wide open. Mm, yeah, because like CMC's out for like four weeks. Um, but Jordan Mason is nice, so it's like they're not really like they're also the Vikings, but it was a close game. Um, but yeah, I think the 49ers are the best team, but like the Lions look really good. I was about to say it. The Saints look crazy right now. Yeah. Like I, they, they they whooped the Panthers. I was like, all right, it's the Panthers. Mm-hmm. Then they whooped the Cowboys like that. I was like, hey man, these niggas might be serious. They they might be serious. What so. do you think about the Bryce Young thing? It's tough. It's tough. I mean, I, I, I don't think he's as good as they probably wanted him to be, mm-hmm. but they don't have shit around him either. Like, they don't have a good offensive line. They don't have good skill players. Like, he's just in a fucked up situation. And I think his confidence is shot, and it's going to be shot even more now that he's benched two mm-hmm. weeks into the season. Like, it's crazy. Like, I, I saw some report that said, the, the season is slipping away. It's week two. Like, that's why, that's, it's literally that's what, week two. That's, that's, why, that's why I just said, like, the season's long as fuck. Like, fuck? like <laughs> god damn. Like, they played they play for, like, four months or three months, bro. Yeah. Like, we're just getting started. It's week two. Yeah, him getting benched is, you know, tough, bro. I, mm. I, I, feel, I feel bad for him. But yeah. also, like, bro, I didn't know he was that tiny, bro. Did you he's, see that one play where he had to jump and throw the pass, like, he's over really somebody? small, yeah. I'm like, Jesus Christ. The small quarterback thing typically does not work out, bro. It's yeah. re- especially when you don't have like when Russell Wilson's small, but the Seahawks had everything he needed: good offensive line, great defense, good skill players. So he thrived. Russell, no, Russell Bryce don't got that. Yeah, and he, Bryce doesn't. Know, he doesn't know how to 
you know, manipulate and move the pocket either. Mm-hmm. Like, Russ, yeah. he can move around. Like, even you kind of like saw it last night, even though he's running for his life, like Caleb can still kind of like get around. It's just Bryce is, yeah, bro. I feel like Bryce, Bryce is another one that might die yeah. if they didn't bench him. Like, cause yeah. it's tough. Yeah, it's tough. It's tough, bro. Yeah. I'm hoping that my Jets can knock off Mahomes and the Chiefs this year. Um, and I I'm I just can't wait to finally see Rodgers versus Mahomes in a playoff capacity. Mm-hmm. Like that's just gonna be electric to me. Like that's that's the battle I've been wanting to see for years. Do they play them this year? Uh, not in the regular season. Okay, so they can only be in the playoffs. Yeah, yeah. So looking forward to that. But that's the NFL. Um, as requested, um, I'm sure y'all listened last week, and I introduced word of the week. Yeah. Uh, but without y'all, which was sad. Uh, right. I was like, oh my god, but I loved it. But I'm back What's with it another given this one. Week? So this word, this week's word of the week. Is banal. Mm. Say it with me. Banal. 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 Well, what do you guys think banal means? You know, how you spell it? B A N A L. It's anal with a B at the front. You see, I'm already fucked up because I was spelling it with an E. <laughs> All right. Banal. No, banal. Banal. Give me a hint. Can you use it? Can you use it in a sentence? I absolutely can. Right. <clears throat> <laughs> I love working in music, but in 2024, a lot of the releases end up feeling very banal, dull, bland, bland. underwhelming, yeah. underperformed. Mm. Banal is an adjective that means so lacking in originality as to be obvious or boring. Ooh. So you guys are on the right track. Yeah, because the the sentence really did it. Mm. That gave it away. Context clues. Like, you know how we rock. Context mm-hmm. clues are key. Mm-hmm. Real, mm-hmm. real, real spelling bee. Um, <laughs> real spelling bee. Uh, tactics over here. Absolutely. Really? Context clues are key. So that is our word of the week. Last week I gave y'all calipigian, one of my favorite words of all time. Shout out to all the. Good. I told you this section. This segment was for Armand. I told you. What, wait. What? What? What did? What? Did, what was that last word? What does that mean? Calipigian. Can you use it in a sentence? Uh, I don't remember the exact definition, but it's a, a woman who has like very shapely buttocks and curves. This so, is so. You be saying you, you be saying that you be saying that to people. I've definitely said that to a few joints back in the day, and they're like, "What's what's that mean?" I'm like, "Look it up. Look it up." Oh, this and nigga, did it work? They was like, "This nigga's a serial killer." They're, they're, <laughs> <laughs> they're happy to learn a new word. They said, "Yo, this nigga right here." I'm like, "What you call me? <laughs> you you call me a bitch?" Yeah, nah, for real. Like, is it, was, <laughs> to spell it, nigga. Is, is, is that a new <laughs> racial slur? Like, what the fuck? Niggas yeah. saying that, whispering here and walking off. People are like, "What the fuck?" Damn, sure, you looking mad calipigian today? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you call me a caterpillar, nigga. Yeah. What the fuck? <laughs> Holy shit. Arma so, is crazy. Yo. Yeah, so yeah. we'll be back with another word of the week next week for y'all. Learn something. Banal? Uh, yeah, banal. Banal. B-A-N-A-L. Not B-A-N-A-N-A-S. B-A-N-A-L. <laughs> what? It's close, though. It's close. But what's not banal is our board meeting. So this week, we are getting into all of it. I know we kind of touched on this oh, last Jesus week of Fergie Christ. Baby. But I was really yes. interested in the perspectives of my two illustrious co-hosts. On a topic that we have discussed extensively this season, but they find new ways to get us talking about it. And there's a lot of layers to this. And I, I say that a lot, but I think this particular situation as it relates to Kendrick Lamar is layered. So we got like four, three main points that we're going to hit. We're going to hit his new track, Watch the Party Die. We're going to get into uh, Lil Wayne breaking his silence on the Super Bowl snub. And we're going to breaking get into... Silence. <laughs> um, Compton <laughs> businesses talking about how they lost thousands of dollars when Kendrick Jesus. Lamar shot the Not Like Us music video. Now, I want to put out a disclaimer and then I want to tell a brief story about my experience with this song. So, very first, lately, I've been having conversations with people, and, and even Miss Two Bees has given me the, the alleg. Well, it's not even the allegations, it's the truth. I, I am a Drake guy. Drake is my absolute favorite artist of all time. I do want to make it clear, though, as much as I call out Kendrick Lamar's hypocrisy or mistakes i do really like kendrick i am a fan of kendrick like I, when people hated mr morale i really like that album damn is one of my favorite albums ever like i i, I really do like so i just want to make that clear when i get into what what's up what 
What's so funny? Nothing. We don't believe you. You need more people. <laughs> we, we don't trust you. I, I already see how this is going to go. No, but go ahead. Like, go ahead okay. But I, I, I do just want to make that clear. Like, and and if we had to talk about Drake this much, as much as I do most usually enjoy the music, like if we're talking about his character, like I, I would be honest with y'all. So now you do be honest. Thank you. you. Be honest. I appreciate that. Mm-hmm. I, it means a lot. Um, <laughs> so I'm on my flight to Chicago. Um, I didn't buy Wi-Fi that time, but they had like a free. You could. It was free for like 20 minutes. Um, so I was on it, and I think like I think I got it like right before I was about to land. And then someone jumps in my group chat like, yo, new Kung Fu Kenny. Like, first calling him Kung Fu Kenny is crazy. But, but I told that's, you, no. bro. They be on that nerd so, shit. Yo, no, like, for real. Thanks to running those nerd like, ass, oh. like. I ain't no people calling like, that for real. Oh, they do. Oh, they, they do. Absolutely. I just hear K-Dot. Yeah. Um, so oh, someone said Kendrick it. Lamar, nigga. And <laughs> then they sent the link to the Instagram uh, video. So I play it. I listen to the song. And the frustrating part about this beef and I think not just with me, but I think with everyone is whenever Kendrick drops anything for the next like three years, I think we're going to be listening to it with, is he dissing Drake ears? So as I listen to it, especially when you see the black air force on the cover art, you're like, Oh, this nigga, this nigga wants violence. Like he, he's yeah. here for violence. Round two. So I'm listening to it with, is he dissing Drake ears? And I'm like, he ain't really said nothing crazy about this nigga. Like if, like if yeah. this is you, cause especially when you denied round two days ago, if this is you engaging in round two, you ain't really say nothing. Like, Drake could clean this up easily unless you're like, this is a setup for something more. Because he did drop it on 9-11. So people were making the joke, oh, like, two planes at two towers. So what if there's another track coming later or something like that? And oh, then he dropped it on, on, on the day. God. Oh, yeah, it was insane. What is wrong with like, these people? these conspiracy theory people niggas. died. Bro, I know. Also like, that. Like, also that. Like, the New Yorker and me do not be liking them jokes at all. Bro, I can't lie to you. Okay, yeah. Uh, go ahead, I, go ahead. I, no, seriously, like, since living here, I look at 9-11 so different than I like did Bro, before. Like, it it's it like was for, crazy. It's for real. Like It's one of the craziest events in like world history. Yeah. I smell the smoke all the way from Brooklyn. This is like, crazy. Like my aunt picked me up from school. It was yeah, I got I to talk to you more after this about it because it, 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 it interests me like so much and it's so crazy. But Yeah, yeah. and it was honestly because you know typically every year you see tribute posts. You see a lot of love. This year I saw more jokes and yeah. memes. It's getting ridiculous. Than actual. I can't lie to you. Like love and... there's too many transplants here. <laughs> yeah, I don't people know. just it's, think it's, it's so it's, it's a weird like uh, it's a weird Anyways, thing. go ahead. My fault. But yeah, so he also dropped it on the day of the VMAs and mm-hmm. he wasn't nominated for anything. So I thought maybe he was gonna have smoke for Drake and smoke for the VMAs. So I, I get through the track, five minute song, and I'm like, all right, that must not have been a diss. So then I go back and listen again with just normal listening ears. And I, I one, I, I I did really like the record, but it was so interesting to me how, as I'm scrolling through social media, reading tweets while listening to it, everyone's like, yo, he despises Drake. He hates Drake. He's co-. I'm like, he had maybe two lines about Drake. Is like, that? he's really cooking you niggas who listen to the song thinking that it was a Drake diss. Like, I, I, I love his repetition of uh, watch the party die. Who's been partying the most over the last couple of months? Kendrick fans. He didn't want all that came with. That's true, right? Kendrick fans have been partying most the last couple of months. You'd agree, disagree? I've been inside, so I don't know who partying. Yeah, I mean, I can't lie to you. I thought the Slizzies was partying. (laughs) Slizzies for sure. But, but, (laughs) I don't know. Like, and. No, I didn't even know Kendrick fans partied. Like, that's kind of crazy. See, (laughs) that's crazy. That's crazy. I thought these niggas are inside. All right, all right. right. Let let, let me use another word because. because I, I, what he, I, he used party to really mean this, like the, the jovial celebratory nature yeah, yeah, yeah. that they've been experiencing after the beef. Like Kendrick, I don't think he wanted everything that came with this. Like, yes, he did the video. He did the concert. Like, cause it quickly became like a West coast thing, but like his, his energy was always just like, I don't fuck with Drake. I'm, I'm trying to get Drake out of here. And he's, he's never been one for the spotlight. We know that. He drops his album, he tours, he goes back into hiding. He does a feature, goes back into hiding. Like, he's not built for this type of publicity and visibility. He talks about it in the record. He's like, people have been putting pressure on me to drop, but the, vis- the visibility has, has, has your spiritual being tried. Like, like his, he feels conflicted about all of this attention that he's getting. And so it was just really interesting to see people 
assume that it was a Drake diss and cling to the low hanging fruit of the track. But he's talking about radio personalities pushing propaganda. He's talking about scammers. He's talking about like, I, I would trade all you niggas to have Nipsey back, like all this other shit. He's really, he wants to burn the fucking world and music industry down and completely change it. And so it, it was just hilarious to me that the people who tell you, you don't know Kendrick weren't fully like taking the song in to understand like he's talking about y'all who who misunderstand him so it's it, it like so this coming off what we've seen has been like the most negative press kendrick has ever gotten with the super bowl selection and people wanting way in over him a story coming out that the, uh, that the, the host city picks who performs and that being debunked and then uh, someone else saying the NFL picks. And then another report from Variety coming out saying Jay-Z picks. The story about the Compton businesses losing money from the Not Like Us video and all the Kendrick stands bombarding their social media. Like, this is the, like, to be in, in, in the midst of the biggest moment of his career and be getting this much negativity, it's weighing on him. Like, I, I don't think he expected his announcement to get so much negativity. So I liked seeing him really, like, peel those layers back and get it get vulnerable in this way but it also set him up to be viewed as the hypocrite that i've thought he's been for a while and that i'm going to kind of get to i promise i'm gonna let you i get to the song i'm just kind of setting up um some different points that i had um fuck i had something else and i lost it go ahead it'll, it'll come back to me i mean i agree with the second point i do think that um this is more so a response to like the way the announcement was received mm -hmm. and just why it was received that way. And like, you know, like we were just making fun of today, like just be a fan. Mm -hmm. Like, I think he is just tired of the music game as a whole and mm -hmm. what it has become since his debut all the way in 2009. Like stand culture makes hip hop insufferable. We talk about that all the time. Mm -hmm. Um, and although it's not a Drake diss, I do think it's like an extension of, you know, all the disses that we've heard For because sure. the, the, the theme of the songs are just like, you know, how could y'all let him be him yeah. and he's not like pure hip hop. So yeah. like, that's, that's the theme. And he's very consistent with that theme, even in this um release. But yeah, I... I agree too. Like the part, the line that really stood out to me or just moved me rather was the one about media. Mm -hmm. Cause you know, we're members of the media yeah. and after learning about like um, branded and sponsored posts and just how a lot of brands are compromised. Like even when, you know, Angelica, the owner of the shade room was complaining about being shadow banned during the debate. And it's just like, you guys are compromised. Mm -hmm. Y'all don't. Y'all literally don't per post certain things. Like there's these TD Jake allegations going on because they think that he's a part of the board. Like it's just, I feel complicit sometimes. Like even the only excitement I have for that future project is the fact that I know the person who did the cover art. Mm. But I know for a fact, like, like I explained, it's probably some like music business mm -hmm. behind it, and it's not anything like passionate on um futures and so mm -hmm. i am also tired of the um, music industry where it's at now mm -hmm. bobby Schmurter did a live once saying that the music industry now was revenge of the nerds i agree um you know before it felt like there was more spaces for girls like me but now it, it seems like everyone has to be like you know nadeska mm -hmm. <laughs> no shade but you know what i'm saying yeah um one thing I will say, bro, I cannot believe he said there was no round twos in that Super Bowl commercial, like the announcement. Like yeah. that was to me, that was that was kind of crazy. Um, just because it's like, damn, like he really, he really he really stepped on Drake and he tried he, now he's trying to step on him again. Yeah. And then, you know, the song, the song was cool. I mean, I saw, like you said, I saw the black air forces and I just assumed violence. Yes. Um <laughs> yeah. but and, and and it was violent. Yeah, it, I it mean, was very violent. Yeah, just the not song. to drink. Yeah, it just yeah. it was it was more like a overall disgust that he yeah. was having. Because um, like Mr. Beast, I'm sorry to cut you off. Mm -hmm. Throughout like Euphoria six sixteen, he's talking about Drake is his primary target, but he's cooking the music industry too. Right. So on Watch the Party Die, it's untitled. He kind of flipped it to where 
the world and the industry is his primary target. Drake caught a couple bars too, but it was primarily for everyone. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like we're the reason that mm-hmm. this shit is here. Yeah. yeah, yeah, man. Um, I liked it. I, I Kendrick's in this weird space right now where, like, not like us is still number one. That's actually number ten. Oh, number ten. Yeah. Okay, I thought I thought it went. Oh, oh, my bad. Excuse me. I read it read it wrong. But um, yeah, I think Kendrick's in. He's in a. He's in a. He's in a weird space where I feel like maybe he like he, he's hitting like a glass ceiling in his career because I think he can like I think he can get bigger. I can't lie to you. I feel like I feel like this next album where. When it drops, whenever it drops, and where it's about to take him, especially doing the Super Bowl, like it's he's about to, if he's nervous and, and and feeling constricted or feeling like he's like the, the the bird in the cage right now, it's about to get even more crazier. Mm-hmm. Especially like I I think the Grammys are a week, a week after before. Or a week before. A week before. Mm. He's about to clean that up yeah. and then go and then go do go then go do the Super Bowl and then probably drop a project in the next I don't know maybe next year. Yeah. Sometime, so mm. yeah, he got bro. the whole quarter one set up for him. Yeah, Shit. Yeah. he's like, yeah, yeah, he's about to, it's about to be like a nice little. That's nice. For yeah, him. And, love that and, for him. And like people predicted, we are seeing these marching bands playing like that, playing mm-hmm. not like us. So mm-hmm. like these moments are being extended, even with him not doing much. But um, yeah, like I I appreciated the very real feelings that he gave off because as much as his fans try to act like. He doesn't take this holier than thou high moral place. They love referring to the Kendrick made made you think about it, but he is not your savior. It's like, bro, even if he said that on the song, the stuff that he is like, he has professed throughout his career. Like he's always taken this, like turn your nose up Mm -hmm. high brow. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm like a more morally right person than you. Religion is very prominent. Yeah. Yeah. And and Christians are some of the worst people. As (laughs) as a Christian, these niggas be judgmental as fuck. It's like, bro, you are a terrible person. Like you, you could quote all the Bible verses you want. Pray to God, be in church Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Bible study, have the Bible app on your phone with a hundred day streak. You still ain't shit. <laughs> Not the streak. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Y'all still don't be shit. So Kendrick doing invoking God so much, mm-hmm. it, calling out Lecrae, calling out D1, like it's cool surface level stuff for the people who don't want to look beneath the surface. But you're complaining about visibility, but a lot of what you've done throughout your career has been for visibility. Regardless of what the intent was, like dissing Drake at the BET Awards Hip Hop Cypher, when people still cared about the BET Hip Hop Awards and were watching, you knew a lot of eyes would be on that. You did that to maximize the visibility that it, that it would get. Um, this whole beef now, like popping out on, on he could have easily dissed Drake by himself. He dissed Drake on like that on Future and Metro's album, which was easily going to be that was the biggest talking point of hip-hop at that point in time like certain things like that so complaining about the visibility saying is weighing on you but then the heart part five with with the fucking uh the all all the little switch the face switches he did in the music video Mm -hmm. like different stuff like that like like you can't complain about the stuff that you that you bring on to yourself and so that's where some of the hypocrisy kind of comes into play that point kind of confused me a bit like he is he not an artist He's an artist, yeah. And so, like, I think he did what, like, artists do. I don't think he mm-hmm. was, like, looking for visibility or attention. And th- that's the time when I ain't like him. So two things can exist. Yeah, but you I think... You could do something for the art and also pick the specific moment that is going to get the most attention. Like, e- even if even if he's not doing these things for clout necessarily, like, the moments he picks kind of... Give some credence to the idea that he's doing. I mean, but when else is he I mean, supposed yeah, to do like, it? Because the he's, moment's choosing him. Yeah, he's not a social media dude. So when else is he supposed to do it? And I actually but, prefer. But, but he's Kendrick safe. Lamar. Like he could do anything at any time and get attention. True. No. I mean, he could. Yeah, but, but what's wrong with? Yeah, like, I what's mean, wrong with course. the strategy that he's using? It's nothing. It's nothing wrong with it. But then you can't turn around and complain about the visibility that 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 you're struggling with if. You're picking the most opportune moments to be visible. I think the point he's trying to make is that, like, y'all hyping up corny shit and y'all hyping up shit that don't matter. Like, 
like he like I think he's trying to say like his art and his lyrical prowess and like his contribution should be enough to make him as visible as the people who are doing the gimmicks. That's at least what I got from it. Cause and That's not a and real, I might be That's I fine. might be biased because I also feel the same way. Mm-hmm. Like I feel like I've done mad red carpets and interviews and all this shit and I ain't getting name dropped in songs and shit. It's like, what else I gotta do? I gotta start doing <laughs> skits and like you getting wanna get name dropped. <laughs> I, not necessarily, yeah. but I want to get you want to be appreciated. I want rec- yeah, yeah, I want, want my recognition. recognition. Yeah, yeah. So I kind of relate to Drake, I mean, Kendrick in that sense because I feel like a lot of, like, the media peers, I'm just like, you know, everybody doing their thing, but ain't nobody gonna offer what I could offer, but because I'm more scary than them, it's just like, nah, we gonna go with whatever they're going with versus, Mm -hmm. you know, the the storyteller that's going viral every other day. But even that, him calling out the gimmicks, like, he's peers with people, friends with people, worked with people who do the gimmicks. So it's just it's interesting that he's looking down on people who do the who do the things that he's calling out. But are they on Drake's level? I mean, well, whether they're on his level or not, people I think that's the point. People will talk about mm-hmm. them as if they're on that level. Who? Like fans? No, who the people? Like the, who the people? Who's the gimmicky people? Like, he's cool like, with the, the like he just worked with Future and Metro, who rolled out two albums off of the back of Pick a Side. <laughs> like you got to pick a side at midnight. Like that's that, that's that's a gimmick to me. I think it was a play on the tag. The if Young Metro don't trust you, you know, if you don't trust you, we gonna shoot you. Well, yes, the the the, the album titles were 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 a hint at the tag, but like throughout that that entire album, it's, it's shots being thrown at one particular guy, and <laughs> literally minutes before the album, like Metro's tweeting, "You got to pick a side tonight." Like he ain't blah, 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 all that, he ain't all lie. that. You but, gotta pick. You gotta pick. But but it's just like at the end of the day, like that's what he did. And I mean, YG's one of his lead singles for his up his new project was weird, which was a Drake diss. It's like, yeah, he like, did Drake too. Yeah, yeah, he that did. shit went under the radar. After, yeah, no one cares about YG. <laughs> but like, Kendrick is cool with these people. He's praised these people. Like he's done. He's he's got relationships with like a lot of them people he had on that pop out stage gimmicky as nothing like drake's relationships with yachty and like all the things that he's been doing as of recently that... which is which is completely yeah absolutely like him him calling out like uh, it don't compare he's hanging out with his peers and people who are from his neighborhood I and know. i don't I, like kendrick you got me defending this man too much i i mean hey i mean well we're keeping it real it's fine but like i don't know it, it, it's just weird to me like certain stuff he's calling out scammers and he's calling out people who like women who who fuck with corny niggas and like just all, all this shit or like the, the the corny shit niggas do to, to what get you saying women. he corny and his wife fucking with him what you saying i mean no 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 no, I, no again i was talking about the people he works with like he, he may be corny I don't, I, I don't know the nigga but like it's just a lot of the things that he was calling out in that song and talking down on are things that you can attribute to people he has worked with people that are in his camp people that are close to him so it's just a it's a, it's a, like he's holding the mirror up to everyone else. But he doesn't realize it's a, it's a two sided mirror that's all also like reflecting him. Like so, it's it's just a very, very interesting thing um, that I see people just not really like giving enough attention to. This this one girl, she went viral um, for tweeting about how like calling Kendrick like anti establishment, but he's in front of the American flag for the Super Bowl promotion, and people are like. <laughs> Well, when was Kendrick anti-establishment? It's like, well, I mean, you can go through his catalog. Like, he very much so was never about the system. But this song just proves it. This song proves everything. Like, this nigga don't want to be part of this system. That has uplifted him. You're a, you're a Pulitzer Prize winner. You're a... How, how many Grammys has he won? Like, 17? Like, like the, the very thing you hate is kind of why you are the way you are. Like, if if if... You before Good Kid, Mad City, yes, you were you were a, a unknown, gritty, getting it out the mud type rapper. But like that onward, you became this critical darling, industry darling. Like, so it, it, it's so funny when you look back at songs within the beef, and he's talking about niggas don't like me, and niggas don't like the West Coast. Like, I, I don't even, I don't think it's true that people don't like the West Coast. It's a very weird like us versus them mentality that he took on, which ultimately worked great for his not like us strategy, but. It's like who don't like you? The internet? No, I think there's did, some. Did you truth care to about the statement. internet? I think there's some truth to that statement. You know, um, Snoop Dogg said it first in the '90s. What? Like, 
you know, um, East Coast ain't got love for the West Coast, you know? Like, there's just this thing. It's like, all right, y'all doing that thing over there. Mm -hmm. It's just never, like... It could be my New York bias speaking, but I understand what they're saying. Like, we don't really fuck with them. Like, what you think, bro? Bro, they did... They haven't... The West Coast hasn't had a hit in so long, so, like... Yeah, we don't fuck with them. Like, the fact (laughs) that they not, like, like... They not like us, like blew up that big for them. You see how they champion that song? Like, yeah. The West, the West really, the West really champion that song because they haven't had a hit. But so, so is is is, 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 is sweetie that, keeping shit afloat? And she don't even make music. No. It, <laughs> is, is 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 that disliking the West Coast or is that just being apathetic because they're not delivering? Well, I mean, anything? people, just, people, people take it. West Coast niggas gonna take it as a diss, right. but. It's just the fact of the matter. We haven't had anything to get hype about from y'all. Yeah, it's, like, just, it's just the fact of the matter. Yeah. Yeah, that's, so, it's, it's not a dislike thing, but I, I I can understand being in that position and taking it as a mm-hmm. like as as a chip on your shoulder. Yeah, like, right. definitely yeah, a chip on your shoulder. yeah, one hundred percent. That's fine. That's fine. Um, He's like, all right, fucking losers. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I I think you know, and I I I really look forward to when we're a bit more removed from all this and people can look back. I'm I'm, I'm in the middle of watching. I don't know if you heard of that YouTube channel. Uh, What's the dirt? But they do those long breakdowns on like they've done those long breakdowns on all the songs in the beef. And he dropped his family matters one today. And he's like, he's literally going line by line. Some of his references are reaches. He's reaching, but some of them like it's interesting stuff that Drake was saying about Kendrick. And I think it like, like, think about the, the, the Planet Money Trees line and how people are like, yo, like, what are you doing for your community? Beyond the community, what has he done for, like, all those West Coast artists he, he had on the stage? Like, you, you ain't promote YG's album. You wasn't featured on there. You ain't get on Mustard's album. You ain't promote that. Blast just dropped. Like, like well, what are you really doing for these niggas who you assembled to make this major moment and won a beef off of? And then you just went back into your cocoon. And all of them are out here like, yo, West Coast is up. And the West Coast went completely right back down because you're not there to boost their shit. Like, it's um, mm-hmm. it's interesting. And I know, like, WAC 100 yeah. has been... I don't know about that. Me what? Either. I don't think that was his... I don't it's, think... not, it's not his job to do yeah, that. Yeah, they're not TDE. Like, not, and he's not even TDE no more. It's not his job, but but when, when you're on records talking about y'all don't like... The, like, like he's, he's broadening this dislike that he feels people have for him to an entire coast. And then he's using them or I don't, okay. Maybe. They inserted themselves. I, yeah, I view it as, as someone who hates people. Mm-hmm. Let me tell you as someone who hates people and someone who's very vocal, like even at work, there will be mm-hmm. a lot of times that a bitch will try to hide behind me to say something that she want to say that mm-hmm. like, She's afraid to say it, but I'm not afraid to say it. So she's yeah. gonna use me to say it. Like that's what's going on with Kendrick. They was been hating on Drake. But they been one of the reason to say whatever they wanted to say. They use this. Like you said, Kendrick is laser focused on one person. He's laser focused. He got his point off and went back in his cocoon. He he didn't exactly reject the love either. Like he I mean, he could have done the whole <laughs> pop out count concert by himself. He brought all them niggas on stage, made them feel like, "Yo, it's lit. Like we we a unit. West shit, Coast we a unit." Nah, that, 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 was, that might be enough. My yeah. nigga, oh, and at that point, you go do your own shit. Yeah, I gave you the like, motion. Yo, go figure it out. And the, I don't know, the motion ran dry. And <laughs> did. Yeah, I mean, also the tires the, is flat. they're not making good music. Like, like they're not. The, nigga can tweet out albums and do all that shit if he wants to. Or but it's still like it's. I don't think it would read that much. But. I guess if like he's talking about the West Coast mm-hmm. and stuff like that, I can could see the point that he, he has to put it on his back and it should be, I guess, promoting mustard shit or promoting why he didn't shit. say you think Kendrick gonna let you disrespect Pac nigga. He said you think the Bay gonna let you disrespect Pac nigga. Like all all these lines where he could have just kept it to himself. I don't know, but man. he brought in all these other niggas. Oh, no, oh, yeah, I don't know. I, I'm oh, I'm from a popular region as well, so I'm gonna say facts. New York when he's... I'm only talking about my three friends. Uh, uh, well, <laughs> and I, I feel know. like he name dropped specifically who he was talking about, like especially like people who like straddled both sides at a point. Um, but I I don't know, I don't know. You just don't fuck with the nigga, and I don't either. I really like. I said I really like. Kendrick. I can't tell. I do. I can't well, tell. We have to hold these people accountable. Ramon, we have to hold tell. these people accountable. 
I mean, yeah, I hope, but what are you holding him accountable for? Yeah, he's not for? doing nothing that bad either. <laughs> he's like, it's not like it's not like he's like he's a hypocrite he's a in the sense that hypocrite. he's a hypocrite and, in the sense that his fan base is fully white. That's what you. Well, no, that's it's, it. no, it's, it's it's not a fully white fan base because it, no, because it it's it, it's people I'm talking to who are black who are who are holding this nigga. At treating this nigga as if he's God, and I'm like, bro. Did, did, yeah, first of all, but there are people that always felt that way. Like they never liked they. Like you see what DMX said on the Breakfast Club interview. There are people that always felt that way about Drake. Well, no, but 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 it's it's I'm, it's it's beyond the Drake thing. Like it's Kendrick the person. Kendrick how he promotes himself, how he how he talks down on these on these systems and these infrastructures that have helped his career. How he talks down on. Things people do that people around like it's 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 beyond the Drake thing for me. It's just like this guy, as a person, is is treated as if he's this like this deity. But he's and I salute him for opening up about his imperfections on Mr. Morale and the Big Steppers. Like I, I thought, as much as people didn't didn't think that album slapped, didn't have any hits or whatever. Like it, it wasn't about that. I, I loved the vulnerability and the honesty that he had. But I think in a way he uses that as like this blanket to, to protect him from other criticisms. It's like, nah, man, like, because the same way you opened up and you say, yeah, I was fucking white woman, all this shit, like all this shit that people would judge you for. You also sit on this, this moral high chair and you talk down on things. This nigga was getting on, it's coming back to Drake, getting on Drake for sports gambling and fucking women and, and, and like Turks and Caicos. Like what was, what's, what's wrong with that? Drake behaves like an insult and he's in his forties. He deserves to be dragged for that shit. Okay. 100%. Okay. The way Drake moves is the not things, okay. The, the, the things that lean into incel behavior. Absolutely. I, I, that, I agree. Which includes That's all whack. the things that he names. But niggas travel, gamble and fuck women at any age all the time. All right, but they're not moving the way Drake is moving with it. He's on some like, yeah, look, Yo, look, yo. It's not lady. like he's posting up with we the, on the art. It's not like he's posting up with, with the sex workers. Like that's, like, that's he, the only thing he, he ain't doing. He out, we know like, they there. I mean, hey. We know they're there. Plausible just based, based on the background and just the context clues, we know they're there. And it's like, boy, go get you a wife. Bro, Sit all right, down. all right. But but like but but beyond the Drake part of it, like why like I don't know, it's 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 just weird to me to like call out shit niggas enjoy doing for fun. Traveling, gambling, drinking, and 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 like acting like you're above that shit, or or that makes someone less less of a less of a man, or less like I'm. I, I love gambling. I love women. I love traveling. I, I don't think I'm any less of a person for it, or like less of a respectful person for it. Granted, I I, I agree that what in society when you hit a certain age, people look at you crazy for certain things. That's fine. I think if he focused on all that other stuff and not calling a nigga out for having a gambling problem, like, I, I don't know, that's, that, that, that's whack to me. And, and I think if it was any other person, it would be whack too. Like, that, that's, that's just whack. Oh, wow, let's just talk about the Super Bowl because the point. What? This nigga's crazy. Is- <laughs> yeah. What? I don't get not one point you try to hold him accountable for. Yeah, like- I'm just, I'm just, I, yeah, I'm, I'm just having like, I'm having a hard time. The yeah. Thing, the, the thing, the thing that I do follow you on is he does throw off a uh, a holier than thou yes, type of that's type all of, I'm trying to say type of type of thing. <laughs> he does, he does, it, it, it does a little bit, but. I think your point when you said he uses the vulnerability as a blanket, I think it's the opposite way. I think I think the vulnerability actually gives him even more superpowers to to be to be honest to me. Just because it's like, I don't know, he has that holier than thou stance or whatever, but also gives you like, well shit, I ain't shit either. So it's it I I guess I can see your the hypocrite part and how it's confusing mm-hmm. for I guess public fans or everybody can like listening to his music but yeah. I, I, yeah i don't know about like i don't know about like having to promote other west coast people and doing all that stuff and like he doesn't have to i know but but it, it was it's just it i don't know it's it's weird to me like if i'm if i'm if i'm beefing with somebody who, who lives on my block and we're part of and i'm not part of some crew all right, no, I I don't even know what type of simile I'm trying to come up with, but I don't know. It was just weird to me. It was like he like he hired hitmen who like granted 
they're all from the same area. They all genuinely fuck with each other. But for me, it's just kind of weird that you all had that moment together. Shit went crazy at the pop out. Whole region loves this song. And then you go back into hiding and leave these niggas out to dry. Like, I, I would have figured there would be some type of mutual type of benefit given out. I do think that that came about after Drake tried to say the West don't fuck with him. So I think that was just him trying to show, like, nah, nigga. Like, you don't see me with them niggas, but watch. They about to pop out. Like, they do fuck with me. I'm the king of this region, nigga. Also, we just don't know what he's... We don't know what him and Day Free and PG Lang is doing behind the scenes, too. Like, they can be... They could be doing crazy stuff, you know? I, Yeah. Yeah, when you know. think about hip hop yeah. in its purest form and hip hop at the core, and you talk about the two figures that we're comparing, a lot of purists are going to lean towards Kendrick. Yeah. And that's just the whole point yeah. of the matter. And I think Kendrick is just trying to get back to the status quo of that. Like, you know, like, it's not okay for rappers to be like, yeah, I just started rapping last year and I don't write none of that shit, but hey, <laughs> we here and I'm making money. Mm-hmm. Got these chains on. What up, ma? Like, that's not okay. And it's mm-hmm. like, it keeps on happening. And now Drake is doing features with these type of artists. Like, it's like, somebody got to call it out. Somebody got to clock it. Kendrick worked, worked with Rich the Kid. That song's hard. It's a great song. But yeah. I'm just saying. Like, Wait, what, what's wrong with Wait, what he did? I mean... Nothing. He's just saying Rich the Kid is one of the gimmicky niggas that Kendrick made. Like, have, have, has anyone cared about Rich the Kid since New Freezer? I think so. And, and and the song really got popping because that little head dance to, to the girls is doing. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I actually think the boys started it. <laughs> sassy boys, we Yeah. <laughs> um, but it, not like us is going to go crazy at the Super Bowl. Yeah. Um, yeah, I know, I know people have been talking about, like, one, people have been questioning if it's going to get performed. I think that's the stupidest question I've ever heard in my life. The dumbest. I mean, obviously, he's not going to be on that stage saying the words pedophile or other things. Is that He's pre- probably going to, yeah. He can't, he can't yeah. say I'm going to say FCC rules. He can't say it's that. Not uh, it's, it's not, not happening. happening. Like, in, in truth, <laughs> they're, they're going to do the hook. He'll probably do one of the cleaner verses. He'll probably, like... I just want to I, let the audience say certain lines for him. I want to. I want to. I want to hear if he says, "Say Drake." Like if he says, if he <laughs> says that the, on the Super Bowl yeah. stage, yeah, it's going to get so real for niggas, bro. Yeah. I'm trying to tell niggas, bro. Yeah, but um, <laughs> it's going to be like that meme. He he's he's 100 percent performing that. Like the Super Bowl <laughs> is, it's it's where you get your your greatest hits off. So we're gonna hear all right. We're probably gonna hear swimming pools. Probably gonna see money trees. I'm interested <laughs> in, in who he's gonna bring up there. Um, Shit, probably Rihanna. Maybe, maybe. I think, a little I think, loyalty, loyalty, I think, loyalty. I think you're you gonna bring out Wayne. We I wouldn't about want that. that. We talked about that last week a little bit, but I, I definitely want to drop perspectives on. Uh, I think you gonna bring this out entire Wayne. It's Super Bowl just, thing. It's just is, is Wayne gonna say yes or no? It, it puts Wayne in a really tough position because your prodigy got killed by the nigga that's about to invite you on stage. Like, w- would you want to be the special guest in your hometown? Absolutely not. Mm-hmm. Absolutely not. Yeah. Especially, it's just. All, all the chatter and everything behind it just kind yeah. of made the moment go stale, you yeah. know? And then, like, I'm not going to lie to you. Lil Wayne took me aback with the video. I, I was shocked. Because <laughs> we, 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 we never see him express real feelings about anything. I'm like, anything, you care? Like, ever. Yeah, I was one of those people that was under the assumption that he wouldn't give a fuck. Yeah. So why are all these people doing all of this? And then when... I he think made... he was influenced to give a fuck because he saw the response. But, like... I yeah, I I definitely think he's one of those people that wouldn't care, but I feel like bro, the response and then like his what, his DJ come out and say something or who said his was, manager? It, first, or? it was his manager slash engineer okay. Fabian. He was yeah. like, "Yeah, we're disappointed, um, but we're just never gonna put him in a position where he like they have to like it's a choice. Like we're gonna mm-hmm. make it to where they have no choice but to pick him, <laughs> and he's the goat." Blah blah. blah. Um, Birdman tweeted I ain't seen Birdman tweeting forever and Nikki was obviously going crazy Drake yeah. stuck to some photos on his IG story um, but one thing that I found weird I was uh, I saw a clip on the Joe Budden podcast and I'd, I I've been listening a bit more often lately because their perspectives on things are interesting um, and they were talking about how they didn't like the video of Wayne expressing himself like they, they, they didn't either you, you didn't like it hell no. no why not it's a bad idea I'm a prideful person yeah one so, like, just me, Ebony Pinillos, would never... You're going to have to see the song cry, baby. Okay. 
But that's you. But I also that's Wayne also gives that vibe too. So he shocked me that he even cared about it at all. I was just like, uh uh-uh. uh. And then like to do that following the Nikki rant, it was, it was too much. They did make a good point. It's like if we saw Wayne expressing his opinions on other things often, then it would just be it would be par for the course. But we don't see it, so it, it was jarring for me too. I'll admit that. But I, as a one, I consider myself in touch with my emotions. I'm I'm a, I'm a sensitive, open Cancer King. Um, I I like seeing people express themselves. I, I like seeing real feelings, especially from artists and. You know, I think the bigger artists get, the more they get removed from reality. And so, like, we don't hear from certain people. We don't hear from, like, Eminem ever. We don't, like, we we, we don't know. We don't know how Drake be feeling about shit. Like, he, he just be trolling on his Instagram story and shit. So, like, we, we don't really know his actual, because a lot of these guys don't do interviews. They don't, the radio interviews aren't really a thing anymore. Like, we, we see, like, maybe one or two Wayne interviews a year. And it's, like, weird, like. Sports. Granted, like, salute to Taylor Rooks. Love her. Um, Or, like. He, he was on, y, on YG's podcast last year was when he said he wanted to perform at the Super Bowl. But we don't see how he feels. So it was cool for me to actually see. This affects you. Because a lot of people assumed, oh, Wayne don't even know what's going on. Because Wayne is so removed from reality often. I, I was like, Wayne, the guy who said he wants to perform at the Super Bowl, he's going to know that he wasn't picked. And he's going to be upset about it. Like, if, if you watch those clips when he's talking about it, the conviction in him, like, nigga, like, took his glasses off and said, what? A fucking course I would love to perform at the Super Bowl. I'm not bringing none of you niggas up on stage either. Like, he he was really in, in, invested in doing this. So, of course he was going to know. But I, I like seeing him him express himself. Like, I, I just like seeing that from people in general. Like, the, being too cool to show emotion to me is, like, it's weird. It's weird. It's something he really wanted. The timing was perfect with it being his hometown. I know there's no precedent for the Super Bowl performer having to be a hometown performer. But the stars w- aligned perfectly. And, and it could have happened. And it didn't, so. An NFL producer said that Hove makes the decision. That's, and Nikki, Nikki that's what we saw, yeah. replied. Mm-hmm. Um, I thought the, like, I be trying to ignore Nikki's rants. Mm-hmm. You know, if people make fun of me about being a Bob, same way you, they poke <laughs> fun at you about loving Drake. Mm-hmm. Um, I try to ignore it, but I just think it's so weird. Like... Like, one, she's clearly not saying everything. So it's like, if you can't say everything, like, just take us out the chat, please. Like, it's not making sense. I felt like she was saying enough, though, for us to kind of fill in the Yay and nay, because, like, we've been assumed that things were not good with the Carters, especially Mm -hmm. when the Carters publicly showed love to Meg and then Meg and Nikki fell out. We've been assuming, but then... Um, Beyonce sent the flowers after Nikki sent the press ons, I think. And I always thought it was political on Beyonce's mm-hmm. end. Um, you know, she's gracious. She's not gonna carry on like Nikki do. Yeah. But um I really like I hope my sis really ain't jealous because Hove don't co sign female rappers like that. Mm-hmm. Like Eve, the excerpt from her book went viral of her saying that Hove called her the day her debut album dropped to say, Don't get your hopes up because females don't perform well. So, and that's the 90s. So, Mm -hmm. from, you know, in context, he wasn't lying. We're witnessing the most successful female rapper currently. So, like, he does not back female rappers. And I do think that, you know, she wanted that Sagittarius, New York, King of New York, Queen of New York. (laughs) Oh, Beyonce, my sister connection. Like, she really wanted that. And Meg is the one who has it. And, She's the one who's 10 years younger than her, like she was when she debuted, and Kim was, you know, the queen. So I'm just like, I pray that that's not it, but it's given that. It's, yeah, it seems like there's a lot of, my favorite word, layers to it, too. Um, People have been wanting to pit Drake and Hove against each other for years. They have been. Years. And granted, yes, and and they admitted it. Drake talked about it in the Rap Radar interview. Like, we we took shots at each other on records. We sat down and talked about it. Um, they work together on Scorpion and they work together on Certified Lover Boy, mm-hmm. but there's the narrative that Hove has had an issue with Drake ever since when Title first launched, Drake took the Apple and Music the deal. Apple, yeah. And then when you see Jack from Twitter, Jack Dorsey tweeting all the Kendrick lyrics and like this is truth versus lies, all this, like it gives it gives a little more credence to the to the it title does. thing. And we haven't we haven't seen Drake and Hove really acknowledge or be near each other or work together since Certified Lover Boy. So it's like 
And they be at that all white party together. They do be there, yeah. Michael Rubin's joint. So like, we, we don't know the nature of the relationship because these two don't really talk much. Or they don't talk about each other unless they're asked. So a, a lot of narratives about it. Nothing that we can really confirm, but there seem to there seem to be some politics behind the scenes. Um, and again, like I I, I wouldn't deny it. Like I said it last week, I was like annoyed at myself for not thinking Kendrick was going to be the Super Bowl pick. But it's like they typically don't go. Like, they rarely go with current big acts. It's usually legacy acts. Like, Rihanna's damn near might as well be a legacy act at this point. Like, she is. Weekend's still hot. That, yeah, I was thinking that. I was um, thinking that. Usher's a legacy act. When it was the the Compton uh, or, or the, the L.A. crew, it was mostly legacy acts and Kendrick. Um, you look back in the day, like, Bruno got one. Bruno Mars got one. He was, he was like, two albums in. That was yeah, like, he I, got that was like a that rare was the current star. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Shakira and J Lo, legacy acts. Like it, you but know, it usually is legacy yeah, acts. Yeah, right. like it's it's mm-hmm. it's just not a thing. But but when you look at the moment Kendrick had, because I, I was thinking it was gonna be Taylor Swift, and I saw a rumor about Travis Scott, which pissed me off. So I was glad it wasn't Travis. But I'm just like, wow, well, it, like it was actually about to be Meg on the Super Bowl stage. Yes, there's a lot of conversations Oof. about Meg. A lot Oof. of conversations. I'm, I, oh I'm sorry. God. I'm glad. I mean, it was a lot of conversations. I mean, what you just said though, too. How you was talking about? Are you talking about Meg and Beyonce, yeah, and the Carter's yeah. relationship? I'm not surprised. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> actually, yeah. It'll yeah. probably happen for her at some point, but I, I, I think it's too soon. I, I couldn't I think believe it's it. Way I couldn't too believe. Soon. It. I, I literally had it. Like, can you say that again? Because I didn't hear. <laughs> like, no one's bringing her out. She's going to. Yeah. That, that, that would be jump. insane. Yeah. yeah. The, like, like even when she was tapped to host the VMA, I was like, why? Like, <laughs> and I can't say certain things because you know they're gonna be like, oh, you're a barb. Mm. But like, I do feel like a lot of these things are just thrown at people yeah, now like they don't yeah. be earning this shit at all bro, and i said, hate to sound like that old head but she's got she's got the perfect machine behind her to keep thriving and that do. that, that rock nation button like they, they press she's the new theme song for friday night smackdown mm-hmm. like that's I, very fitting I, I, I turned on smackdown on friday i heard never play i was like nigga is that meg what the fuck what is she doing here but they're also doing they're as we've talked about they're doing more Hip hop type collabs and stuff. So I mean, but that also falls back into the thing that Kendrick's talking about too. Like, I'm over the highly visible rappers because of the brand sponsorships and not the hits. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, shout outs to the Wakashi Wasta song. <laughs> but like, <Wakane>. <laughs> but I already see she about to do the like international crossover. Yeah. Black people don't fuck with me no more, so I'm I'm still gonna make my money and yeah. do major things. And it's just like. Uh, she doing records with these K-pop niggas. Yeah, this, yeah, it's like shout outs to you, but I miss Tina Snow. And, and it's just like we don't have to stay on Meg too long, but 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 the pop star push for her is so interesting because I feel like she still doesn't have a strong foundation in hip hop. It like, feels forced. It's it, yeah, it's it's not there. It's not there. TikTok blessed her with the Watashi shit. Like, <laughs> now that's on that's on go crazy. It's all right. That's on go crazy. It's all right. She had other songs. I wish she got bigger. But um, you right. But um, yeah. So well, for you for y'all though, like, would you have rather seen Wayne get this the, this look for the Super Bowl? Like, whether what? Because I don't think I got your like general thoughts on how you felt when you saw Kendrick announced. Were you disappointed Wayne didn't get it? So. Well, you know, as the non-sports person here, <laughs> I don't give a fuck. Yeah. But Wayne did express his interest in performing. So I was just like, okay, cool. And it's in New Orleans. So that made sense. Yeah. But when I seen that Kendrick got it, I wasn't mad. It made sense. And um, like his daughter, Regine, said, you know, if this was a few years ago, she would have had like a Nikki type rant. She don't play <laughs> by her daddy. Yeah. She went to war with T.I. over her dad. Yeah. But, um, you know, like she said, he has his own festival and he's doing the Hot Boy reunion that um, Birdman wanted to lead at Essence Fest. And, yeah. You know, that's his city. He does it every year. I'm pretty sure it brings revenue to his city as well. They're, they just, um, they just had a hurricane and stuff. So, I mean, I'm sad that he's sad because I th- didn't think that he would care. Right. But he'll be all right. Yeah, I I really didn't feel any type of way about it mm-hmm. until like I guess seeing everybody's response and just and just seeing like how how big it really blew up and how people I was how, shocked how much people shocked. really I, I, really I figured really, Kendrick would be unanimous love how much, how much people <laughs> how much people really how much people really wanted him to to perform the and, God Kendrick Lamar and like <laughs> and it's like 
it's like I get it, but also like I get the Kendrick shit too. Like mm-hmm. I, it makes like, sense. I get like uh, I, I, I get it, and you know, you kind of mentioned it, but I feel like it's starting to happen that we're getting more like current, um, current Super Bowl acts, like or like people that are like. Maybe like like Rihanna's a legacy act, but she still was like it still was Rihanna, even though you know she's she still current. Dropped, yeah, she hasn't dropped she's from like current. anti or whatever. But and then like when the weekend performed, that was like at the height of his shit peak. And then <laughs> it's like Beyonce's was good too, and maybe maybe it wasn't peak Beyonce, but at the same time she's still like relevant, super legacy. Like yeah, you know she what had I'm what saying? 2013 and 2016. Yeah. 13 is when she dropped self titled. 16 mm-hmm. she dropped. Formation, I think the day mm-hmm. after the Super Bowl, then she mm-hmm. dropped Lemonade months later. So, yeah, I'm just like I'm trying to envision my mind Wayne doing the Super Bowl. Like, I just it's like hard for me to like like I get it. It would be fire, but mm-hmm. I feel like the performance. I don't know, bro. I don't know. But you gotta think he's got he he would have months to rehearse. Yeah, of course, of course. And he's course. got a team of people who would help him put the show together. Like, I think people are severely underestimating that. Like. We saw what Usher did when he had months to rehearse, and he he, he probably could have still smoked it and not rehearsed at all. But I think, I, for me, I think the fact that Wayne wanted to do it so badly, he would, like, all the narratives about him not being reliable, no showing, you know, being drunk, being high. I think <laughs> I, th- I think he would really take this seriously yeah. and put his best foot yeah. forward. Yeah, I mean, and he's a he sports guy now. Yeah, like he like like he knows what that entails. Yeah, I just yeah, bro. Um, I agree. Yeah. It, 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 it would have, yeah. It would have been, it would have been hard. It would have been hard as fuck to see him, to see him do it. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and it, I feel like this is maybe the, this is like probably the last time too that like he even could be considered for a Super Bowl. Like I don't, I don't, I don't see him getting it any anytime oh, soon. That's also a good point. Yeah, like this is like the last. I feel like this is like the last time. He's I feel like they it. might try to throw him a bone at some point in the next couple of years, but he, he probably won't want it. Um, yeah. I don't I mean, definitely mm-hmm. don't throw me no bombs. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be. Uh, yeah, it's gonna be tough. Uh, they'll be fine. They'll I be fine. Wanna, I want to know if you think you think Kendrick and them are gonna ask him to come out, or you think? <sighs> I thought it was that a, might be the bone that's gonna get thrown to him. I thought it was a possibility before it became a YMCMB versus everyone type thing. Yes, I think now yeah. I, I don't know if Kendrick he can't do, do it. it. Yeah, he can't like, do it. And, and if he do, it'll be crazy. That's what yeah, I'm like saying. Wayne was already in a tough position because it's like, if he asked, and and initially when I saw Kendrick was announced, I was like, I was talking to my boy about it, and he was like, Wayne shouldn't be a guest. I was like, well, he should do it. Like it's his hometown, mm-hmm. he should do it. As I thought about it more, I'm like, nah, I, I would be sick. If it was my if I'm the biggest rapper in my hometown, I asked, I get asked to be a guest. Mm-hmm. Like I know on the surface on TV it'll look good. Kendrick with the hot boys up there, all like it'll be cool. But I know deep down for me, I'll be like, "Yo, this should have been my stage. I should be the headliner." 100%. So I, I, th- I think that would be whack. Damn. But the other thought I have is like, Damn. you know, this recent recent initiative led by Jay Z, where we're getting our artists on the Super Bowl stage. Like, I'm interested in who's going to be next and how long it's going to go before it's back to you know the pop and country niggas. Like, mm-hmm. I think it's only a matter of time before Taylor Swift is on that stage. A matter of time before Post Malone is on that stage. Give it like five, eight years. My homegirl Sabrina Carpenter gonna be up there, like you know what I'm saying. So I'm like, damn, what other Black legacy artists do we have that are like fitting for the Super Bowl stage before we really have to like go mostly current, or they go back to their old formula of rock bands and pop and all that stuff. Like, Beyonce gonna have to go again. You, you think she would? No, but that that like off the top of my head, that's like the only Black person that I can think of. I don't think any of these new niggas like, at all. I, I saw someone mention Tyler. I was like, mm. she got way to go. People to, like to Tyler, giving the stuff. Tyler, Tyler, oh, Tyler the creator. Tyler creator. Tyler creator. My bad. Yeah. The, 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 <laughs> I pulled a Donald it's Trump. Good. It's all good. <laughs> like Nikki, she's hot. Like you, you say Tyler fast. You might think I'm saying Tyler, but I'm saying Tyler. So I get. It. Also I get Tyler it. the but creator. Tyler creator. Okay. I don't know. Like it's, like maybe. Maybe I was just have, I guess when the time when we crossed that bridge because yeah. I couldn't even see this so it was like all right yeah I, I think I think Doja could reach that point in the future if okay she yeah, she got to slow fire. up on, on the antics that's a good she good pick fire. she got to slow up on the antics but but I, I think she could get there in the future it's I I, I I could see SZA in the future like not 
not like anytime soon, but sometime in the future, I could see it. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Like the, the, the this initiative has been cool. It's been cool to see weekend. You know the 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 L A joint, Rihanna, Usher. Now we got Kendrick. Like it's dope. It's yeah. really dope to App- Apple Music being part of it too. Yeah, Apple, Apple Rock Nation. I thought we like, were kneeling though. Like that's the only part that gets me. Like since Hope when we said, gave a fuck. Hope said we're above kneeling in 2019 when he signed the deal with the NFL. He said we we're, we're, we're mm-hmm. done with that kneeling shit. Mm-hmm. Now it's time for action. And this is the action. Yeah, and it's also interesting. Having the people so, for free. Some other hypocrisy people have called out. Like Rihanna was one of the people who stood with Kaepernick 100%. back in the day, and then she's on that stage. Kendrick Lamar stood with Ka- Kaepernick back in the day. Now he's on that stage. You see, he found the legs to stand Bro. on. There you go. And now he a hypocrite. I've you had, got it. I've had you got multiple, it, friend. I, I've, I've been standing on my own two feet. <laughs> no, this that's the one leg. Standing strong. That's the one leg. <laughs> She's trying to go, like, I'm, 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 I'm a pirate with a peg leg. Nah, it's two legs. <laughs> Two legs, nigga. But all right, let's chill. <laughs> let's, but, let's let's chill out here. That one leg. But, <laughs> but um, yeah, and honestly, you know, as as exhausting as the conversation got for me very quickly, um, it has been a good like thought exercise. And I think I think the biggest takeaway from all of this is we have to remember that all these people are human and they're imperfect. Like. Yeah, you might not fuck with the NFL did to Colin Kaepernick, but if you're an artist who gets invited to perform that Super Super Bowl stage, are you saying no? No. Or are you saying no? And nope. it's like even myself, I'm like, damn, like <sighs> I fucked with Colin. Like I I I thought he got done dirty, but if I was an artist and nigga, they invited me, nigga, I would be up there popping, locking, <laughs> d- descending from the fucking rafters. No, like, for real. Like, <laughs> like <laughs> g- 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 it's the goddamn Super Bowl. Yo, like come it, it's literally the biggest stage. Yeah. Like uh, almost the biggest stage in the world. I know the World Cup is bigger, but like it all eyes, all ages, all races, all creeds, even if niggas don't care about the game, they are locked I in was just about to say that. on that halftime performer. I'm watching. Like it. it's it's the rollout of a lifetime. Now now we've seen a lot of artists. Some didn't do shit with it. Like Usher dropped a flop that weekend that he performed. Mary J. Blige's album didn't really do much that weekend. But like, because that's what I was gonna say. Like what when Hope said now it's time for action. Like what's the action that's happening besides these performers. black performers? Black free? performers. <laughs> We're good. Let's get it. <laughs> we pass kneeling. <laughs> we get to hear you don't have to call and 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 lift me up and. <laughs> Fucking well, what, all the mother Rihanna songs, like yeah, <laughs> we good. We got black performers. We good, man. Um, Not too much on hope though. Hey, you know, I mean, well, we got to be honest. I I, I know b- b- Brooklyn. I know big Brooklyn. Brooklyn got to stand together, but Ho- <laughs> Hope's another hypocrite. He's another one. And some people grow. Okay, he's grown into more of a hypocrite. <laughs> you can't be righteous when you got all that money, child. You can't. This is true. This is true. The more money you get, the more corrupt you are. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, how'd y'all feel about that uh, report of the Compton businesses losing thousands of dollars when Kendrick Lamar shot the Not Like Us music video in Compton, his hometown, where all his West Coast artists convene and they are a unit and everyone hates them? <clears throat> My bad. I had, I had to go on a, I a never petty, saw this article before tangent. you brought it to our attention, to yeah. be frank with you, and I thought it was bullshit. And mm. didn't, the, didn't the store owner come out and say something like, oh, it wasn't... I'm not like talking about Kendrick or something like she, that was after they got mad hate mail. And, yeah, and I bet they did. And shit. So I it, mean, it, shit, it, it seemed like a clean up to 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 alleviate the hate that was coming their way. This seemed like a stain. It seemed like some bullshit that don't have no legs on it, to be honest. Like yeah. what he ain't get a permit for the day. How how much you lost? What? Twelve hundred? Here. Take that shit. I, Shut up. I saw people being like, you should run a better business so you don't lose thousands. Like, yo, y'all, Type niggas, shit. y'all niggas will defend Type Kendrick shit. for anything. Because shooting a music video make you hungry. If I if I don't want to stop at your fucking establishment after that shit, it shit suck. Now, let me stop. <laughs> see, see, <laughs> see, see. Let me stop. But no, I did think the report was bullshit, though. It's like, all right, call the nigga. Call him. He, I'm pretty sure he will reimburse you, okay? Yeah. That shit happens a lot. It you know, happens. It's, it's like, yeah, it's, it's kind of... I be on set, so I guess that's why I have bias, too. Mm, like, it happens a lot, and it's like, it's unfortunate that they got, like, the hate mail and stuff and this and that, but I'm pretty sure Day Free probably made one call or something and got these niggas some money, and everything's, everything's copacetic now. I just, I don't know, bro. I feel like 
Yeah, Drake fans, Drake fans definitely saw that. It's like, see, look at him. Look what he <laughs> and did. And that's what I thought when I'm I seen like, it on oh the sheet. Gosh. I was like, Armand. Like, here we go. <laughs> Bro, I'm, I'm just presenting the information. The reports came no, out. I it's never a even heard, heard the right? report anywhere. We, I, I mean, I seen it. It was all over Twitter. You, I seen you it. You niggas saw it. I didn't like, it was like, oh, I seen it. You, uh, you know what it is? Y'all ain't want to see it. <laughs> yeah, y'all, y'all ain't want to see it. Y'all are part of Lamar's Legion. That's okay. what it is. No, after he called himself Le- the King of, of New Lamar. York. Legal Lamar over here. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it is. You want to call me an owl? Yeah, y'all are, yeah, y'all are <laughs> Lamar lovers. Lamar yeah, lovers. Yeah, yeah, you know what? Yeah. It's because I know better than to go against a nigga named Lamar. <laughs> Trying to think of the other Lamars in the world, Lamar Jackson, BMF, yeah, uh, BMF, 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 BMF Kendrick Lamar. Lamar, like that name. Don't don't play with it. Uh, Jermaine Cole, Jermaine Lamar Cole, kind of ruined the Lamar name with his antics Type earlier shit. this year. Yeah. Wait, yeah. his middle name's Lamar. Jermaine Lamar Cole. Yeah. You see, mm-hmm. that's how true it is. Mm-hmm. I'm confirming that, but I'm pretty sure it is. Right? I'm like, hold on, check. <laughs> um, but hmm. that's how true it is. Interesting. You see? Uh, to this week, I learned how big of uh, Kendrick Lamar fans my co-hosts are. Jermaine Lamar Cole. T- t- two R's at the end, though, so it's a little different. I was Lamar. Yeah, yeah Lamar. <laughs> Roy, <laughs> Lamar. <laughs> but let me go on record giving a disclaimer, people. All right? Kenny Capers right here. I walked out of the Barclay Center when Kendrick Lamar was performing after he dropped control, after he called himself the king of New York. She's also on record saying she throws ass to not like us. Just saying. Just ferociously. Just saying, ferociously. Especially at the what, 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 Please, please take record of all this <laughs> stenographer. Take record of all this. But when I see the, the Drake defending at this point in time, it's cringe. <laughs> and I, it's, it's, it, it got to bring, bring everyone to reality here. Where's the daughter? What do I... <laughs> Where's the daughter? What daughter? Where's the daughter? Listen, Drake got his ass whooped. D- d- dear baby girl, where she at? Drake got this his ass whooped a by a hypocrite. He's talking to a ghost. He got Bro, his ass whooped by a hypocrite. This nigga is about to pre- perform at the Super Bowl. You know how crazy this is? That's like, cool. this is the best diss track of all time. This is like, key. bro, oh, I'm trying to, uh, like, I want people to, like, seriously wrap their head around when this nigga does not like us. On the Super Bowl stage, I'm telling you, ass gonna be throwing in my. I'm telling you, (laughs) I'm telling you, niggas might have to watch Drake and make sure he's not on suicide watch or like something like that because that level of publicity and like the stake, like oh my god, and like leading up, it's like we're like watching. It's like we're watching a fucking Martin Scorsese film or something like the 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 beef happened and this you tell a nigga to pick a side like bro. The pick a side shit is so crazy that it's led up to this nigga perform at the Super Bowl. Mm-hmm. Like, what the fuck? Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. this is nuts, bro. Like, cute. this is actually nuts, my nigga. <laughs> yes, it's, it's he told niggas cute. To pick. Yeah, cool. I mean, he told niggas to pick a... They to, bro, this is crazy, bro. <laughs> I ain't picking. This is crazy, But I'm bro. entertained. We had, yeah, we had, we had two titans going back and forth. And then the nigga said, bro, in the video talking about there's no round twos? With a huge American flag in the background, shooting off football, talking about I'm about to do the Super Bowl, mm. nigga. I'd have been on. I'd, I'd have been like that. Drew, that Drewski meme. He's like, shit. He like breaks the glass. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Poppy, Poppy <laughs> took a lashing. Like, what the fuck, gang? <sighs> well, yeah. I, I would heavy. just like for you all to know that I'm renaming that couch with my two co-hosts. There, <laughs> they they are the NFL national followers of Lamar. <laughs> hey, man. Please, read not too much on leave. me. I've never even heard damn. I can't even hold you guys. You never heard what? I, I never listened damn to is, Damn is hard. I must say. Damn is hard. You should look, you look at you. Him. Damn is hard. Look at you. Bro. Remember, he went on record claiming he likes them and then Bro. called them a hypocrite for nothing. <laughs> I like a lot of hypocrites. Okay. You know, like, That's fair. Me people too. are human. They're, they're too. perfect. I like a lot of hypocrites. Uh, yeah, we can actually you know pin me? it there. Yeah. There we go. There we go. I thought that was a good conversation, though. So thank y'all. <laughs> thank y'all for the input and. Also for like, and again, not that I want this to be a debate show, but I do like when we disagree on things. Yeah, like, it's refreshing. The, the, there were moments the, during when I was getting my points off and I, I thought I was spitting and y'all was like, I was like, I was like, I was like, like oh, shit, nut. man. Because you know what's crazy is like, like prior to the, re- I'm not going to lie, like to put the lunch out behind the curtain, all throughout work day, I was going through certain points in my head, like what I was going to bring to the pod, you know, pr- producing, pr- Type shit. Pre-producing. Producing. Yeah. So I was like, oh yeah, I'm gonna hit him with this and then this. 
And then we'll be like, yo, who's been partying the most? He want to watch the party die. That threw me off. That threw me off. That threw you off the craziest. Have we Kendrick niggas like, not been partying the most? He's like, Kendrick fans. I was like, I was like, them have they party? not been partying the most? I thought them niggas is inside. Not like us was number one all summer. Shit, nigga. They, these niggas every day. Wah, 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 wah. Like, them niggas, these nah. niggas been having a ball. Niggas is doing the ream skis. They've been having... There's been more niggas doing... And granted, the ream skis big. But it's been more niggas. Wop, 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 dot fucking them up. <laughs> Rather than, you know, hitting the... And I love it, too. The ream skis hard. I love that shit. You, you, um, you saw Justin Jefferson do that Bro, week a one. Lot of, lot of, lot of, lot of, a lot of football players are starting to do it. That shit hard. That shit hard. shit hard, yeah. It's kind of yeah. crazy to see. Yeah, it's crazy <clears> to see. <throat> um, but yeah, that's our board meeting. So I would love to hear your thoughts. Do you think Kenneth Lamar is a hypocrite? I'm <laughs> like, bro. How, how'd you feel about Watch the Party Die? How do you feel about Kendrick versus Lil Wayne, the Super Bowl uh, mm-hmm. halftime sure. show? Like, probably has like, you probably have darts at like a Kendrick or yeah. dart board. I don't. I don't. Bro, yeah. I'm, I'm about to listen to some Kendrick on XL. I'm going to watch the Monday Night Football game and then watch Monday Night Raw. I'm going to listen to some Kendrick on the way to work tomorrow. And I'm, 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 I'm going to send y'all screenshots. Um, <laughs> I'm good. You ain't going to show me game. <laughs> how do y'all feel about the NFL, the national followers of Lamar? Um, <laughs> like, all, all, all your thoughts. Please let us know. Um, so, that is our episode for the week. Um, really good conversations. Again, great to be back with y'all. Um, I, I love getting into these things with y'all, whether we agree or not. Um, so, a lot of, of topics that we want to hear from y'all about on social media. Um, so... Of course, follow us at Stay Busy Pod on everything. Subscribe to the YouTube channel and all your favorite audio streaming platforms. Subscribe to the Patreon. We got more content coming for y'all there. But most importantly, stay safe, stay humble, stay busy.